Okay, start. Nice. So, <laughs> hello everyone. So, this is our talk number three. Hello. With Konstantinos Kantaridis. And we will be talking today with this guy. I guess if you don't know him, you really should try to know him and you should like really follow all his works and everything. So here I will show some of his works like it was the easiest time for me to like uploading all of them because it was so many mm -hmm. works I had to choose from like I only like downloaded 20 of the images but and also I had to crop them a little bit so it does not really make any justice to them but if you can just go to his art page or everything and just like watch every single artwork he has ever done because it's really worth it. So I guess in here I just downloaded the like really random 20 all from his page. Uh, because also when I asked him to share the info about the stream, he uploaded the 20 new paintings. So I had like mm -hmm. 40 paintings to choose from. So I guess everything should, yeah, you can pretty much get familiar a little bit more with the works he's producing. Mm -hmm in here. So now we will go to the scene when the Konstantinos is already painting something. Uh, so yeah. how are you? Like we were already spoken for the past hour, no. but I guess for the stream, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> yeah, but uh, everything is fine. Thank you very much for inviting me. And uh, I don't know, I hope uh, the people who are watching this can uh, somehow learn something yeah. new or and whatever. If anyone like <laughs> has any questions or anything just feel free to ask them in the chat and yeah. if something is not right with the audio but i guess everything should be right at the moment with the audio and if if anything is not right just just tell me via chat so i guess i will be able to maybe maybe do something about it so uh could you tell us a little bit more about yourself like the introduction to your story and everything mm -hmm. The hard, yeah. the hard stuff. <laughs> the, the origins. About me, well, um, uh, well, as everyone else, I started uh, having an interest in drawing and painting because uh, I was watching uh, different games, um, and a lot of D and D mm -hmm. was inspiring for me, and I wanted to paint and draw my personal uh, characters, my personal cards, art cards, and stuff, and. Uh, I started uh, drawing, trying to draw. I was seeing some other people who were better at drawing and was trying to find uh, a way to make this anatomy, mm -hmm. these knights, these things. I was trying to do the same. And this got me inside uh, trying to paint, to become better at this thing. Uh, I don't know what uh, other than that, as, as the years gone by. And for how long um, you are like I decided uh, or doing this type of stuff? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, of course, uh, the hardcore training was uh, when I went to University of mm -hmm. Fine Art. Before that, it was a little, you know, I was just painting every day some stuff, yeah, just, like trying just to, to get familiar with everything. whatever. Yeah. But when I went to the school, I, uh, I decided that this thing will be the, I, w I want this to be my job. So I decided to to allocate a lot of time on it. I was constantly drawing, like for example, from 2007 mm. and 2008, mm. from this uh, from these years, I'm I'm constantly painting. Like it's been, oh, okay. I don't so, know, so I still have time. <laughs> 10 years. <laughs> it means like you, you are almost <laughs> double in terms of experience <laughs> than me. Yeah. So fine. But, <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's, it's never ending. It's a never yeah, ending I, thing. I can know? imagine. But I never knew that you were in an art school. I thought you were studying something with the physics or something like this. Or with the uh, tech? No. Uh, yeah. Before, uh, before uh, five, uh -huh. six years, five and a half years, I, I came to Corfu Island to do second degree in computer science. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to learn more about okay. programming. <laughs> so it was like the second degree that I, I still haven't got the degree. I owe some lessons. Yeah, just but, uh, like from the time, like yeah. I can say I know you like when I was like talking to you via Facebook, I remember like you were always saying like you have a, a, some classes to pass or something like this. So yeah, uh, but yeah. when you were like at the Academy of Fine Arts, what type of classes there were? It was like the, the design type of stuff or like the painting, mm. sculpting or what? No, it was all the basics like uh, sculpting, uh, engraving, um, but the whole, painting, whole course uh, it was had all this... like how it was called, 
like the the main direction of the course i have no idea how to say it uh no they did they didn't have it like that it had uh, like a uh, oh, painting okay. one okay. sculpture one then it went to more advanced stuff and uh, but they, they didn't teach uh, any oh, technical okay. well, because elements in my case it was like so... I, I am also like, i also finished the academy of fine arts but i had this industrial design course but it was like the general name mm -hmm. of the of the thing i was at so i i thought maybe it yeah. was something like this for you also but yeah yeah it was more more general and i was uh, one of the few people who did the digital painting yeah, at, at my when academy, i, it was also... I initially, initially i was trying with a mouse i was doing some shading with a mouse <laughs> i was clicking the alt uh, key for eye color picker uh... how we say and uh, I was painting with a mouse, and uh, then after after the first uh -huh. small gig, I managed to take money to buy the Intos I have all these years. It's uh, Intos nice. for medium. <laughs> yeah, I I took this one, and uh, I started doing digital uh -huh. more and more. I remember my um, first painting was also because with the mouse. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, you have to pass this. Uh, it's a rite of passage. I don't know. You have to do it. And um, then, uh, because before that, I was pay I was drawing a lot in paper. I was trying to do I was doing a lot of drawings, anatomy studies. I was doing a lot of drawing, and uh, at the, around that time, I was inside the conceptart.org. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you remember the site, uh, and this whole community was very helpful. Like we were, there were some challenges. Uh, a lot of professional artists were there so that you can push yourself a lot more, ask some questions to people. It was same for the Crimson and Daggers, right? It was nice. Yeah, yeah, I think this came uh, after that because uh, the concept art was going uh, a little yeah, on the bad side. I remember like the when I was like was starting, still. like starting the, the whole painting and everything, the concept art was like already declining. So the, the Crimson yeah. Daggers was like the forum to go to but because i was just like yeah. uh, like the extreme beginner i was not really brave enough to post anything in there so the pretty much the whole era of the forums kind of missed me but yeah mm. yeah things changed i think the the whole style of uh, forum uh, uh, became a little uh, out of style these days i mean after mm -hmm. facebook a lot of things changed uh, people were more used to immediate uh, reactions like you post something people can comment immediately um, uh, while on concept art you have to post in the forum um, the, to upload images it was more uh, tiring mm -hmm. yeah it that's had right. a lot and of also steps. you had to like it wait for the little, response yeah. for like god knows how many days yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, but also it was one of the topics <laughs> that the the spiridon was talking also about like mm the ah, the forums really? that are dying and he was really advising that the forums should like really be a thing once again and the personal blogs also should be a thing like once again you ever had like a personal blog or something like this i had i had one because uh, i was watching other people and i said uh, maybe i should start one to have like a journal mm -hmm. and try to upload some images but uh, i mainly gave att attention to mm -hmm. conceptart.org so I kind of neglected it, like <laughs> couldn't uh, be in everything. I was trying to upload in Debian Art. Oh, it was like the main so... platform I was using back in the days. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it's still it's it's a nice. Uh, besides the strange <laughs> things that gather uh, around the site. Yeah, the, it's the okay. focus it's of nice, Debian uh, Art is nice. like, uh, as the name says, it's kind of <laughs> Debian at the moment. <laughs> a lot of the event art yeah yeah <laughs> really yeah, it that's, was kind that's of true. funny so when you were starting like painting or drawing and everything yeah. like how old were you like i guess you were drawing for like all the time or as long as you can remember yeah i remember being uh, small I, uh, I i i actually started drawing more uh, when i got mm -hmm. uh, game boy i remember um, yeah you yeah, know yeah. the console the small console yeah uh, when you bought some uh, games from there they had this little book i remember from nintendo games they had these little books and inside they had all the monsters from super mario for example it was like a small art book it was 
it had inside all the monsters of the game. I remember something like that came together in the package which had the the cartridge. And and I was trying to copy all these drawings. So I was putting them on the side and I was drawing uh, Super Mario, for example, on the side. I was doing my first exercise, if I can say it like that. Uh, so in my case, um, the, the first thing was, so was, was the Diablo book. So I got lucky with this type of things. Uh, that's, yeah. that's better. <laughs> that's yeah, I guess better. we will discuss some Diablo yeah, later so... because I pretty much always do yeah. with everyone. <laughs> I guess, but, and will do yeah. with everyone, <laughs> but yeah. Mm. It's a and for the different things that yeah, you are yeah, doing, but... like beside painting, what activities? Um, yeah, beside painting, uh, I, I'm uh, because of uh, computer science, I am uh, doing a lot of programming and playing around with the VR mainly, trying to develop oh. uh, for VR. Uh, but uh, outside of this, uh, I was doing a little bit of martial arts mm -hmm. uh, and uh, hiking, trekking. Yeah, I guess some I saw some like photos that. <laughs> from like the dojo you were in yeah. or something like this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was a nice experience. Yeah, but the the okay. first question is like, it's, uh, why, good to work. why computer science? Because it kind of bothers me. Like after, besides like learning the, the programming and knowing the, the programs a little bit better. Uh, because uh, I thought that uh, if I go to this uh, mm -hmm. school, for example, it will uh, be like a shortcut to learn uh, programming a lot faster than I could do myself. But uh, as I see, it's like uh, the same thing that happened in fine art. You have to dedicate a lot of mm -hmm. hours yourself and do a lot of self-teaching. Uh, and I did. I wanted to do this because... Uh, I want to be able to produce my own uh, programs and uh, um, applications like I couldn't do this without some uh, nice. training. It's uh, also really helpful in 3D, I guess. That's why I'm like, doing all of the stuff in 3D. It's yeah, like, yeah. easier to write all these like, scripts and everything. So, yeah, I guess it's cool. Yeah, that's cool. And it also helps with some of the terminology, like you see some things and you for example when i was studying about light and i was watching the rendering software uh, when i was reading some things i could understand how they calculate ah, right right like i could yeah, imagine I guess you have uh, to be good at math yeah. if you want how to they... make a computer science type of things so yeah so yeah, if yeah. anyone yeah it was it was like mm -hmm. uh, math Continue. It was like a, a, a sub type of mathematic uh, university. It had a lot of maths inside. Yeah. So if, if yeah, anyone is uh... wondering, like in my opinion, Konstantinos was like the opposite of like being an artist in a like typical manner, because when I was like always asking him about <laughs> something, about light or something like this, instead of like getting the get inspired or something like this answer he pretty much threw at me a pdf with some math inside of it where it was explaining how the <laughs> multiplying type of like blending mode works and yeah. was explaining to me for like two hours why the screen is the only proper way to add light and why you should only uh, use yeah. like <laughs> linear dodge add to add some rim lights because there's a logic behind it yeah. and there really is it really makes the world like way easier in terms of painting yeah it's not that uh, I always uh, was looking at it like that because I was also reading a lot of the classic books, trying to understand mm -hmm. values and stuff. I was reading Loomis and all the classic, uh, but I was doing a lot of training and I couldn't find uh, uh, each uh, mm -hmm. different setting ended up having uh, some uh, vari variations like I couldn't do warm, uh, light, cold shadows and stuff like that. Because in some uh, certain uh, image it was correctly correct, but in some other situation it was like uh, it, did, it didn't work correctly. So yeah, the nice thing about like having all this math behind I, it is like you can always produce the result that you want because you understand what is going on pretty much. You don't have to really guess yeah. why something is yeah. not really working or why it is working or something like this. Mm. I think. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's the point, because I wanted to reduce the stress uh, of the work, because it was very stressful to to have mm -hmm. an order, and I could spend a lot of hours, and I couldn't uh, manage to make the piece as I want. 
and uh, when the client uh, throw, threw some mm -hmm. changes on it, it was even harder to fix it. Like, oh my God, what I will do now? I don't know. So I wanted to find a way that uh, it would be, I would be more sure of the result. As so I could pretty much reduce the stress like of the a work. flawless workflow. Because yeah. I guess at the moment you can pretty much paint everything using this method and it will look at least okay. Yeah. It will be probably way look better. Yeah, but at, at least, least it will be okay or <laughs> properly lit or, or everything. Yeah. yeah. So, mm. yeah. Yeah, that helped a lot uh, in the whole. This process helped a lot. And in the latest images where I was um, doing some spheres, spheres of pre-calculated uh, light on the spheres, like the, I was trying to pre-calculate the colors mm -hmm. of different objects. This uh, was also helpful because I was trying to improve this process a little, little by little. Now, because I'm doing something uh, random here, uh, I'm less worried about stuff. For example, if something doesn't work, I can uh, make it disappear or something, mm -hmm. or I can change something. But in work, that uh, there are certain things to do, I couldn't do anything th like this, so I had to find a clear process to produce the results. And this helped with uh, this all, all these things with the math and stuff. Yeah, it's helped also a lot like in a this preparation uh, for the work. Aspect, pretty yeah. much, you will prepare all of the things that you need to start the work, and later you pretty much mm. just need to make the painting look good and that's all because all the things that you needed really to think about are already solved like beforehand yeah so yeah mm. so for the painting that you are doing yeah. right now is there any idea for it or is it just a pure mm. scribbling just uh, a scribble <laughs> no the basic thing was like as we said it it should be something yeah, about demonic uh, or uh, like uh -huh. dark souls diablo and stuff like that and the uh, it is, I think it is beneficial to have an environment because after that you can uh, introduce a character inside it and have all mm -hmm. the colors of right. the environment to affect it. So it's, it's sometimes it's better to start with the environment as you can imagine it. And uh, it would be a lot better if I could see, if I could gather some references so that I can see maybe texture of uh, cave, uh, mm -hmm. cave rock. Because if I see texture of cave rock, I can come and then uh, try to simulate this yeah, texture. Yeah, also like having references see, is like one of the best things the ever. So, yeah. And for the references, you usually go like to Pinterest, uh, Google Images, or uh, yeah, I could go to Google. Mm -hmm. I I use Google and Pinterest mostly. Cave rock, for example, and. Uh, you could even, for example, you can use uh, anything. I sometimes take the photo and uh, post it, uh, uh, use it inside the Photoshop. I mean, without uh, uh, feeling bad uh, about it. At the moment, pretty much everyone is using <laughs> yeah, photos, uh, so I don't think it's a yeah, thing it's a, to be ashamed of. You can take for Yeah. Yeah, if, if you can produce a result uh, that is uh, nice and the client will like it, it's all good. Uh, but if you want to be free uh, from uh, having to use uh, a special kind of uh, reference or finding it in a certain point of view and stuff, it's better to do some training to be able to hand paint. A yeah, texture. it's also one of the things that was so, really always mind-boggling for me when I was like looking at your paintings because you can. It, it kind of. I know it's not like. Uh, an easy thing to do but you always make it look so easy and the texture is like so loosely painted yet it still looks like really <laughs> good so it was like one of the things that was always like weird for me like how are you able to for example paint a tree just with a circle brush and it was like mm. it was like five strokes and it's a tree and i can see a tree or like the it was the ship <laughs> that i was talking to you previously with the giant like you made like a white dot mm. with a blue dot and it's a sheep and how it's a sheep yeah <laughs> how it happens uh, for for example if you want to do if someone wants to do a rock here that will have a more uh, realistic feel um, it like first it needs to have the basic shading on it like uh, the basic light and shadow and it needs to have uh, ambient occlusion mm -hmm. introduced. It, it needs to have uh, someone has to imagine it like a grayscale model, 3D model. Yeah, without I remember the texture. when I was like asking you about and, this type uh, of stuff. 
I, I failed ja. doing it. Uh, someone... <laughs> <laughs> I don't fail, man. If uh, someone can do this, then... And the, and the object is ready with some shading, then it's uh, mainly a matter of adding some texture and you can paint it like... Uh, you can see the little shapes it has. For example, you can make little lines with mm -hmm. shadow. You have to imagine the form. You have to imagine how it is. And uh, if you introduce all the elements, like highlights, uh, I mean specular reflection mainly, uh, and the variations in color, things start to look uh, like a realistic. But from close up, it looks like a mess. Yeah, it's not, that's uh, right. But it's also one of the yeah. things that you don't really yeah. seem to have a problems with because I have seen you painting amazing stuff like just with a round brush or with the chalk brush or like with a really basic brushes. I know it's a really typical question, but what is your take on brushes? How do you feel about them? Um, I feel that, for example, what I'm using here, which is uh, some of the basic brushes of uh, the old mm -hmm. brushes of James Jones. And uh, the good thing with such brushes is that you can quickly create a texture. So uh, with a round brush, sometimes uh, it will need a lot of time to simulate yeah, right. some dirt or something. So uh, a brush by itself is just a tool. If you want to make something and uh, some brush seem to help with that, it's okay. But if someone tries to hide uh, um, uh, some lack of knowledge in some areas, the brush will not help a lot. It will make some things look uh, cool immediately, but uh, other difficulties will come uh, and be visible in the image. So the brush is like a minor detail. It's good to have a lot of brushes to be able to do some work a lot faster, mm -hmm. but it's not a, a solution for all problems. I, I agree with it completely, I guess. Yeah, little, little amount of brushes and uh, with some variation of them. Mm -hmm. And also one and of whatever, the things that I whatever. noticed that a lot of artists that are really good with like a really this type of rendering and sketching and everything tend to have a brushes that are pretty low quality in terms of like the texture. So for example, the, the brush you showed previously, it's not really high res, it's not really sharp texture. It's just a really low yeah. type of of resolution <laughs> for, for yeah, this type of stuff. <laughs> and in my opinion, I only yeah. think it's like one of the things that you really start to appreciate when someone else is doing this type of thing because you can see how like not much you need to see the actual texture or to, mm. to get a suggestion yeah. for for the whole painting. It makes the whole thing uh, looks uh, simpler and uh, less yeah, tiring. Yeah, it's uh, not so yeah. many like sharp details in there that you, you yeah. need to focus on. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, you can always go sharper in details as you go. For example, if the image goes on and you decide that this area here uh, here will need a lot of more details, you can go zoom in and start building all these uh, little mm -hmm. uh, surfaces as if you, as if it is it was the main object of the illustration. For example, you will make a more careful uh, specular reflection. You will add some micro geometry there, like small bumps and stuff like that and immediately because you introduce small shapes here it reads as a mm -hmm. detail when you go yeah, the problem is to be out. consistent and you build for the whole piece yeah. i guess uh, like to remember w what type of light yeah. setup you have on the whole painting and to like not switch the, mm -hmm. the light direction for example maybe it's uh, nice to have a, an, a general ambient for uh, the, main, the, main, the main things, so that a lot of things are visible. And you can introduce some uh, a higher intensity light source at some point, for example, this bright uh, value in the depth. Mm -hmm. You can introduce something like that in the end, and, and that will help you add uh, extra details. But you, you can have a general ambient light. For example, there is uh, this orange thing light uh, coming in this cave mm -hmm. from some fire or something. But uh, yeah, you can also always add more light uh, if you see that it helps the composition yeah. somehow. Uh, and for the whole painting, like usually because as everybody can see, like you're working extremely fast. How long do you yeah. take, like spend on like a typical uh, painting? 
like more or less usually it's <laughs> it seems that uh, around three hours there can be some uh, some good quality as uh, for example to some painting but uh, if you want for work i don't do only three hours for work uh, stuff it might take uh, sometimes it takes months yeah, because right. of the feedback loop sometimes it takes uh, a whole lot but for personal paintings around three hours is the the usual so for example that, uh, the majority of the things that you have on your art station it's like three hours right yeah <laughs> Yeah, these are uh, around the three hours. Fair. Yeah, I think it's illegal to be honest <laughs> to be this fast. Yeah, but if you if you zoom in, you will see all yeah, these uh, crappy I know, things. <laughs> I, I know, but there is like yeah. no need to zoom anything in. Like I yeah. was like really often admiring all of this small stuff. Like I always wanted to get to the point where I can like in the quotes mm. cannot care about the quality of the details. And just yeah. to make the whole painting look good, like the to make the overall feeling of the painting look good. But I really like to like sit and do some details. Like it's really for me <laughs> enjoyable <laughs> type of thing. Uh, for me, it was always the feeling that I had to learn a way to be able to sketch, to produce a sketch that will contain all the basic elements that I can show to a client so that he, he can mm -hmm. have a good idea of what the final piece will look like so that any changes will be a little relevant. So I was trying to find a way to make the sketch uh, contain all the essentials. And so I started searching what are these essentials. For example, there is definitely a need to have light and shadow inside it. There is a need to have uh, the basic textures inside the sketch mm -hmm. um, so that the client can see some basic construction like basic drawing this rock will not be super detailed as if i was drawing it with pencil but it will be there in in such a position so i try to find all this stuff on how you can produce a sketch that will contain the basic light and shadow the basic texture the basic things that i can show to a client and uh, all this search resulted in this kind of mm -hmm. workflow if i can say so to produce a sketch very fast you need to have a system to calculate the colors quickly like ah it's orange there this color will be like that uh, you have to find a way to introduce texture quite easily fast for example you can use the the brushes mm -hmm. for that here a stroke a stroke for natural elements was enough to create some uh, indication of uh, ambient occlusion if i guess of cavity cavity map as they say which has all these uh, little c crevices uh, shadows in the crevices here like uh, it, it was an easy way to create a texture in this rock like by doing a simple brush stroke and uh, such things allowed this process to become faster and uh, making it possible to create a, a piece in mm -hmm. three hours. There's so one question. I um, would really like stop you a bit for in here yeah. before we continue. Uh, from yeah. Doc on Doc Action, how do you get inspiration on what to draw? Uh, that's a, I guess that's a good question because previously I answered it like from yeah, my yeah. side, but now it's now it's your yeah. turn. Usually, usually uh, when I search for. Uh, images in uh, the internet for example if i google uh, dark souls or diablo as we say and they see some images of environments and some characters and the textures uh, uh, on this stuff i immediately bring in my in my mind some similar uh, imagery like uh, i combine all these different images and uh, i get inspiration from that so games and uh, such stuff even music if I hear some music that is uh, uh, some ambient, for example, that uh, indicates a dark situation and stuff like that, it gives me uh, motivation and inspiration to do the, a piece that gets inspiration from that. I mean, uh, I don't know, basically from images and uh, from uh, games, mm -hmm. like you can get inspiration yeah, from anything. <laughs> Uh, and also, I also don't the know fact if that I you see pretty much paint anything in like three hours or less. It also, I guess, helps with the inspiration because like you can explore a lot of different ideas quickly. So I yeah. guess this is yeah. a huge thing. 
I'm, I'm sure a lot of people get inspiration easily. For example, if they do some, uh, mm-hmm. when they play some game after that, I'm sure their, their head is filled with uh, images to that they would like to paint, for example, That's if it right. is an artist. Uh, or when you hear some music, you want to express, uh, you have some image that comes in your mind. The problem is a lot uh, of people get inspired, yeah. but actually do nothing with the inspiration they get. So for example, after like a marathon yeah. of playing for 20 hours straight, like you feel mm. really inspired for this type of stuff, but you also feel mm. tired and you won't paint anything. So this way it's kind of, uh, mm. it, it's not really getting inspired <laughs> with. So I understand that the technical um, difficulties make it a little less exciting, for example, because you have a nice image in your mind and you, when you try to paint it, uh, things I, don't I go know as it easily. Too well, I guess. <laughs> so. Like when I close my eyes and I see the painting, it's like, well, it will be the best painting that I have ever produced. And yeah. then I try to paint it and I'm like, wow, I have no idea how to do it. I'm like, why? Why is it happening? <laughs> Yeah, but it's uh, it's becoming a lot more uh, enjoyable as you put time to do the training. So, if there is any kind of motivation about it, is that when if you put the hours to do training, you will have a, a lot uh, better opportunity to enjoy painting what you have true. in your mind. Like, for I example. remember how many times I was like <laughs> at the beginning, especially I was really like stressed with the painting because or drawing because I mm. wanted to draw something but I had no idea how to do it. But like pretty much just recently, I felt kind of this something clicked and I started enjoying mm. like doing things that I remember I was not enjoying a lot like back in the days when I was painting something. So I guess yeah. that is going nicely, at least at the moment. Yeah, it's it's a nice, it's a nice reward of the time you put uh, to do this hardcore training. Mm. You are painting all the time. I see how much you produce. So it's like... A, you you also feel this result and say now i can paint a lot easier i can do a better result of the image i have in my mind it's more fun yeah, and also overall. the more you do the more pretty yeah. much you tested things so you know what will work yeah. what won't work and you can pretty much avoid yeah. doing a lot of different mistakes so that's right and for the i guess the inspiration for the games like what are your favorite music bands the, for the games and music bands okay mm-hmm. let's start with the music bands like who the music music bands uh, well i since i have been listening to a lot of metal you know all the power metal death mm-hmm. metal all of this kind do metal all of these um, were giving me the power metal will give me energy to make some uh, images that have some battle scene or uh, on them or something uh, the doom metal will give me some uh, mood that was darker and stuff all of all of these uh, things uh, had a lot of images to mm. inspire me. Um, uh, now, for specific bands, uh, I don't have that uh, that much of a specific because I like a lot of uh, different groups. Uh, but some standard ones was Blind Guardian, for mm-hmm. example, Iced Earth, and all the classic Iron Maiden, yeah, and, uh, all these uh, classic. Yeah, but. Uh, uh, yeah, a lot of like different uh, groups. So stream of you because like when you were like streaming more often, I remember like there was there were always like yeah, yeah there was Some always meta. a metal, <laughs> but the always the funny thing for yeah. me was like you were painting, you were chilling, some chill like metal music was playing. But then there was this moment when you started to get serious with the sketch or with the painting and there will be like some Dragon Force or, <laughs> or Bolt Thrower or something like yeah. this. And the heavy yeah. stuff like came in and then the actual painting started. So it was always funny for me because yeah. I was just coming to yeah. the stream, listening yeah. some music, just going to the kitchen, listening to really heavy music at the moment. So, okay, it's time to go back and to see what is happening and what is he painting at the moment. So, yeah. I learned a lot of different cool bands from yeah. from your streams. Yeah, yeah. Some, sometimes you were uh, like saying, uh, "Try this band." It, 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 you you were the one who was getting me in this uh, like another vibe. <laughs> you were um, recommending a, a band that was like more uh, energetic. Yeah. And when I was putting the the song, he, it yeah, was it's nice. also the funniest thing because I have a friend yeah. of mine. Maybe he's watching at the moment, Jakub, and like it's impossible 
to tell him a band that he does not actually know. Like I can discover he... something so <laughs> like underground of the underground, and he is like, yeah, I heard entire discography and everything, and he knows every single band. And always when I can tell someone like listen to this one or do you know this band and he is like no I don't know this band mm. and like yes finally I can show something to the people in ter- in, to the peoples in terms of music <laughs> like <laughs> it's always a nice type of thing <laughs> but yeah and for the games like I know the answer but <laughs> if yeah for the games uh, I consider for example Diablo and the Dark Souls Dark Souls is more contemporary in comparison to Diablo, but uh, this uh, somehow gave a lot of inspiration due to their styles, but not only this. Uh, for example, as I said, D&D was a big uh, thing, Dungeons and Dragons in overall, um, and from PC games, uh, the first one that was uh, really stick with me was Icewind oh, Dale, if you remember. Game. Because it had these illustrations from uh, uh, Vans Kovacs mm-hmm. and Justin Sweet. These were uh, amazing to me. Uh, huge inspiration. Um, these games were, uh, for example, I, I consider Icewind Dale to be a big uh, influence. Um, what other game? Baldur's Gate, of course. Mm-hmm. Such uh, role-playing games, I mean. Um, yeah, and for the, for the D&D, which what I was like. Like, your class of choice? You were like the GM or the player? Uh, well, I did some uh, GMing, but uh, as a player, I was mainly playing always a, a dwarf, dwarven nice. fighter, dwarven cleric, dwarf. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Usually a dwarven uh, Has anyone character. ever tried I don't think to I throw have ever played. your dwarf? Like to actually pick it up and throw it at something? Uh, yeah, yeah, we so, did some so tricks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or uh, trying, I was trying to do something with a halfling having on my shoulders to be like a bigger, <laughs> bigger uh, kind of man. Nice. Like, yeah, you, there yeah, are also, a lot of things you can. Okay, could, I don't know. You, have you yeah, played actually, any? Yeah, I was like DMing for pretty much. I played like three times as a player, and like I have no idea how many times as a GM because, like, in my group of friends, I am the one with the imagination, as they say. So usually I am jamming yeah. something, but our games were like, okay, new characters playing three times, not playing for three months, new characters mm-hmm. playing three times, not playing for three months, yeah. and it was always the con- constant like redoing everything. So yeah, but you even made yeah. some paintings from yeah. your D and D type of endeavors, right? Um, yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was fine because as we were talking before about inspiration, it was a clear uh, inspiring moment. For example, after the session, I had all this imagery clear in my mind because we were actually playing at that uh, mm-hmm. environment, for example. So I had it vividly in my mind and I went home and I was like uh, enjoying uh, trying to paint it at least as fast as possible so that I can uh, yeah, sleep so afterwards. Can <laughs> so I, and I, yeah. And I wanted, <laughs> and I wanted to share to the team so that uh, each one of us can see uh, somehow a lot, a little better how we were in that situation. And uh, it was a fun thing to do. It also it was a good training. Yeah, and uh, and a good sub- subject matter to pick. If I didn't knew what to paint, I could easily take uh, ideas from there. Like, yeah, uh, because like it's easy to this. imagine some like a typical scenario when someone is fighting with a dragon, but in D and D, especially yeah. if you <laughs> have like a group of friends that really enjoy playing with each other, then like the situations in the game will be extremely weird, extremely unique, and there is no way anyone yeah. like else will paint something like this because if like you will try to illustrate all yeah, yeah. the dumb stuff they do. Like you can make tons of art books just based on the descriptions of what people are doing while they are playing for the DNA. Yeah, that, that's true. Like for that's example, true. a friend of mine like used to play some sort of a warrior or something like this, but his warrior mm-hmm. was an alcoholic, and there were so many different like <laughs> endeavors and fights where people were fighting, and he was just drinking vodka in a cave hiding or something like this. So uh, the ideas are are weird. Are yeah, weird. 
there are ideas that are not uh, easily to be found. It's uh, it occurs mm-hmm. in the gaming, like uh, the, like the happy little strange accidents ideas, that yeah. will happen and that are really special <laughs> yeah. for for all the games. And what yeah, system I... you were playing? Like three and a half, fourth? Uh, no, no. This one was uh, lately. We are playing mm-hmm. in the fifth edition. Yeah, it was. It's a nice improvement, I think, because the, it made the whole system a lot uh, easier to implement, if I can say like that. Uh, but uh, in older days, I was playing uh, the three and a half. So we were, we are older. stuck like in the this three and a half slash homebrew or something like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, it, uh, it's a nice thing. I managed to find a group here to play, so. Uh, it's nice yeah. because I understand that in D and D it's not easy to find a lot of people to play. I have no idea usually. how it is in Greece because uh, also if anyone is not like don't know like Constantinos is from Greece, but I guess in Poland it's not that hard to find a lot of ah. people. Yeah, because oh, really? like the mm-hmm. like as we said previously, the metal scene in the Poland is quite big. And mm. a lot of metalheads are yeah. playing this type of games, so I guess it's it, mm. it's not a that big of a problem yeah. to find this type of stuff in here. So, actually, w- makes what sense, is yeah. the 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 scene for the games for the in, entertainment industry in the Greece? How how does it look like? Mm. I don't think it's like uh, games. A lot of the mainstream. It's like uh, I think a lot of mainstream things are happening here, if I can say it like that. Um, so if something mm-hmm. is popular, you you can find it for sure. But other more uh, less popular stuff are not easily to be. Um, games. It's the same for games. It's the same. For example, as we said mm-hmm. about Cyberpunk. It will be a hot game here in Greece mm-hmm. in the when it and will be released. Witcher was was also a big hit, big hit. Mm-hmm. Uh, Diablo is a classic. A lot of people here have uh, yeah. grown up with and Diablo. Are you for familiar example. with Gothic? Uh, uh, yeah, I know, but I I, I have heard a lot of uh, yeah, good amazing. stuff about it. Um, as uh, some of the best games to play, but I I don't I, yeah. I haven't okay. played it yet. So it will be a nice time to a, a good time to play sometime because even if it's old, it's the best. I'm sure it will be there. one of the well, best games yeah. ever. So <laughs> I, I was already like, and it should okay, be. It is big, right? It is uh, a big game. Maybe not big, but it has this really like unique vibe to it. Like I don't think there is any other game with the vibe that the Gothic has. It is extremely unique in my opinion. So yeah. Nice. So if you like RPGs yeah. and like this type of Baldur's Gate, Diablo, and pretty much everything like the Gothic is is the game to go to. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. You have it's to fun. try it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's right. Definitely. And mm-hmm. for the like studios for the entertainment industry, are there many in Greece or? Uh, no, uh, we have some. I think in Athens, mm-hmm. some studios, but not. Uh, this is. Uh, this is a topic uh, by itself. Here in Greece, we don't have a lot of uh, such uh, studios. For example, I know because you have there CD Project Red, for example, is a big player. Uh, here we have some small uh, studios that are trying to produce something. I think mobile games mainly, mm-hmm. um, but not a lot of sp- mm-hmm. not a lot of stuff. Maybe we have a lot more in uh, tabletop games. I'm not sure. I don't see a lot of uh, okay. developers, so if like, I can say. Yeah. Because yeah. there's also a question. Um, uh, uh, how much do you guys charge for commissions? Fully fleshed out digital paintings and with characters and backgrounds. Like, I I know it's kind of a touchy topic, but... Yeah. Uh, well, uh, about commissions, I don't have a lot of uh, commissions because it is more like mm-hmm. company work. But for commissions that uh, that tend to occur, for example, sometimes there was a commission about D&D skin. Some person wanted the party to be drawn, you know, like uh, uh, to portray their, their D&D party. But uh, because this client is uh, an individual, mm-hmm. 
there is no way that he can find a lot of That's money right. to pay for such a work. Um, so it would it it's like it is a totally different chapter. It's other thing the pricing you will get in companies and big mm-hmm. uh, projects, and a totally other thing you will get for commissions. For commissions, uh, you could uh, uh, discuss a lot of it with your client, find the price that is uh, ideal for you to spend the time you need to spend mm-hmm. to make the piece. But it's not it, it's not easy to. I, I would not recommend uh, charging by hour. Because it's hard yeah, to Yeah, in this case calculate. it will be dishonest for you, like doing a yeah. disservice for you or like yeah. really ripping off the client if you are like charging hourly. But yeah, yeah. I, I think one of the things that... You can... Are you familiar with the Chris Do with From the Future? Um, uh, He's like I'm not sure. a graphic what designer. Do... He has this The Future group mm-hmm. and he often like discusses all of the pricing and everything, mainly for the graphic design type of stuff. So all of this, like nice. logotypes and everything, but he once said a really nice thing that I really agree with that when you are like making private commission, for example, uh, you mm-hmm. don't really have, you shouldn't have like a set like price list. For example, you don't charge $100 for a logo mm-hmm. design or something like this, but you should really charge a client like every, you should really charge it differently depending on the project, depending on the client, because for example, you wouldn't charge like, for example, a Nike or something like this, as he said in the example, $100 for logo for their sub brand, Mm. but you may be charged $100 for logo for like your friend because he needs a logo, but you cannot afford to Mm. work for free or something like this. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. there is there is uh, some kind of pricing that develops after doing a lot mm-hmm. of works. You develop an average because you you have uh, you have some clients. You put some yeah, prices right. and you develop an average. And you it's like you decide uh, an extreme minimum. For example, you say I will not mm-hmm. drop below this price because I any I want I don't want to spend time to get uh, to de- to. I don't want to spend time on a work that I could do training, for example, or do something else right. in my life uh, below this price. So you make this minimum uh, depending on your situation in life. For example, if you need a lot of money in this time frame, you can take some clients for cheaper if you if you mm. need. That's not a bad thing. If you need to gather yeah, some money nice. and you have a need, it's okay, but um, for uh, definitely for uh, small clients that uh, ask commission and stuff like that, it's very hard to put a standard price. You will end up uh, discussing a mm-hmm. lot with your client. You can say that is, uh, you can put a price that you like, and you can say that it's up to discussion. And from there, you can see how much you can play uh, around your minimum and, uh, yeah, and the nice, around your minimum. The nice also thing. And if you that's sort of interrupted, but okay, continue. I guess you will. You will talk about it. No, no, because I no, I just had in mind what this uh, the mm-hmm. about the question. So because I I understand how hard it is to to find a, a price for that. Uh, maybe they need to put more time into thinking how they can calculate a minimum. Mm-hmm. For example, you can take your countries. Uh, it depends a lot on the country you live in. Uh, you can uh, take your country's basic, uh, uh, mm-hmm. how we say, salary, and, and you can say, I will not drop below this. Because if it is like that, you can better go and work as a waiter yeah, or something uh, temporary. So you, you can find a way to create a minimum, uh, add something to it, uh, because it is, an, uh, it is a job that has an expertise. You have spent time to create the skill to do the work. And you play from there. As you keep going up, you will see that as you get more jobs, um, you will not be able to take all of this. So the price will be, you will add more price if, if someone else wants to do more work because you will not have time. And it will, uh, the price will appear little by little, but it's not something set in stone. You can yeah, easily. Fine. But one of the, also one of yeah. the things that, yeah. uh, that was really nice that I heard like with each new commission, you should slightly increase your price. And for example, each year you should make like a 10% increase or something like this, because this way you will like know you are constantly progressing. And if people are agreeing to pay Mm. like the higher prices, it means like 
your skill is worth this type of money so it's fine yeah. also it's one of the reasons and also there is a question that i will like talk about like soon but it's also one of the reasons that i for example enjoy living in poland because in here we don't have like euros mm-hmm. we have zwota yeah and like four and four thirty, i guess is like one euro in terms of zwota like the transition course yeah yeah, yeah. so like even if i will get like a really low paid commission after transitioning all of this money to the mm-hmm. water it's still like quite okay in terms of of the payment yeah it's, so yeah. this is a nice thing yeah. living in a place where there's no euros yeah yeah that's definitely it's a it's a big parameter and uh, it's something the person has to think when he mm-hmm. does the pricing because it's it's a part of the it's a part of the competition of course it's not good to go below um, below some standard if there is the, uh, the, i mean it's good to have awareness of the mm-hmm. prices that are uh, in the industry so that you don't uh, undercharge a lot but uh, this usually happens for the companies for the small clients either you charge a lot either not they have a standard price that are the, they are willing to mm-hmm. pay so no matter what calculations you do, either they, they will have a, a price in their mind, which you, I think usually will go, I don't know, it depends on the country they are from. If they consider uh, 200 USD to be a lot, it will be a lot. If they consider to be little, it's a little, it's very variable. It depends on the, where the client is from yeah. and yeah, stuff I'm like that. I'm still waiting for my client from Dubai mm. or from the Swiss, so. <laughs> It will be a really nice <laughs> yeah. thing yeah, to that's... have a client from uh, Dubai. <laughs> that's true. It will be great. But, yeah, yeah. but also there is a follow-up question. So do digital artists yeah. earn good yeah. money in the industry? I think, yeah. It, like, yeah. if you are good, yeah. then yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, are better than, you are better than good. Yeah. The focus should be always to improve the skills. And uh, I think there is good uh, compensation like you can do your living i think one uh, someone once told me like when you're f- like actually working with smaller companies and everything like okay they might have some problems with the pricing and everything but if you are like working with the giants and they want something from you like basically you can say whatever price you want and they will be like okay we need this till today like they will pay yeah. it without any uh-huh. type of problems so I guess if you yeah. are good and if you have like a skill and people are like willing to work with you, there is no problem to live as mm. an artist uh, right now, especially with all this patronite yeah. and all the other possibilities that the artists now have. It's like extremely easy to make a living as an artist if you have at least some skills. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. It's uh, because it's a normal thing to consider like. Uh, this question about if I can make a living, it's mm-hmm. a serious question, it's, it's okay. But uh, yeah, we can, uh, I think we can answer that uh, if you pay attention to keep improving and become uh, competitive, have a good skill set that is uh, useful for a client, they need you. I mean, make uh, such skills that they need you. You will, uh, you will make a good living out of it, I think. Mm, that's that's right. it. If you if you if you go the freelance way, you will have to take care of finding and keeping some clients, building a trust with them. Yeah, that, that's uh, my story at the moment. If you go in some, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, every mm-hmm. path has uh, some uh, yeah. the difficulties. Is that I can like go to sleep whenever I want, and the downside is mm. like yeah. I need to worry if I will have a commission for the mom- month at the moment yeah. but usually it happens <laughs> so like I have no commissions for a month and like the next day I has like 10 commissions that needs to be as soon as possible yeah. and it's like mm. all in or nothing like it's always like this like you, you never get like a commission in a good time <laughs> frame. you always get all of them at the same time <laughs> so yeah yeah yeah, it happens like that. I don't know mm. why. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of funny. So yeah. for the painting, you are adding some sort of a giant, right? Yeah, some. Uh, yeah, if afterwards I add some people like that uh, in scale, it will become a giant. But I can uh, I can also make someone bigger mm. if I want, and it will be like a normal uh, monster of uh, yeah, size, right. normal size. But uh, it's also yeah. mm-hmm. it's a it's definitely a thing that. Uh, 
as the years go by, it uh, it it is a little distracting, like uh, talking and painting. So, um, in a normal case, I would think a little more. Like I would think now, I would stop this painting, and I would think about the materials a little more. I would think uh, what is the skin yeah, of well, this guy. Since it's like a Instead zero of, yeah. pressure painting, then you don't really have to yeah. do all of yeah. these things. That's yeah. right. Uh, yeah, for example, now I'm taking more immediate uh, decisions. So it's not uh, exactly, this is not the exact mm -hmm. process I'm using. Uh, but uh, somehow it's similar. I, I would just simply, in, in the normal case, I would do a, lo a little more pre-calculation, if I can say like yeah, that. Basically create like a Instead of going for yourself on the site. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah. For example, if I decided that this would be the skin color of this uh, mm -hmm. creature here, uh, and I wanted to see uh, how this color would appear inside this environment, I would uh, create this thing. I would create a multiply layer, and uh, I would try to see what, how this, how this uh, color would appear if, um, let's say, if this this color. Uh, let me show it here. If this color mm -hmm. would be the color of the light that would reach this uh, skin, so if I put this color here, this would uh, give me the color that. Uh, the material would be inside this environment, lighted by the, by this uh, orange color. And so I could easily decide to build its anatomy, for mm -hmm. example. And for uh, to go darker from this, I could uh, paint the habit occlusion with black, if I can say for fast result. Otherwise, I could also take, um, I could also make, where is the multiplier layer? Here, I could take that for example, this light will come from the planes below. So I could paint this and this would give me the so value. So basically you are treating the stone, like the stone that is reflecting the light, as another light source and you are still multiplying it. So Yeah, yeah exactly. Ah, exactly. Okay. Because everything is yeah, a light right. source here. Um, mm -hmm. So you, you make all this and the object will be unified with the scene because it receives light from it. Um, of course, the default white here, mm -hmm. this local color, as we say, would be the default color of the material as if it was visible from white light. So if suddenly you throw white light uh, from, let's say, this side, you could paint, uh, oh. you could paint the skin without color. <laughs> and yeah, you it have it like a that. little bit off at the moment, but that's because there is no lamp. Yeah, yeah because uh, because it's. Yeah, exactly. It's because it is only there uh, and I would have to also introduce uh, the same light in the rocks. But it's something that you can calculate and do. And you could also, if you add this effect of the light, for example, <laughs> now I'm doing it with screen. <laughs> you introduce somehow from the side that there is such a light, white light somewhere. It will start to look, if you also add the specular mm -hmm. reflection of it some more uh, yeah, and I guess this is effect. like the wildest thing that was always like like it was always the most amazing type of thing that you were always doing on your painting like adding for example like a light source from the side it's like it's not a problem <laughs> it's just there and it looks already okay <laughs> It was one of the stressful situations uh, that I strive to uh, find a solution about it because it was like all the clients were, oh, let's make it uh, night skin instead of day. Oh my God, yeah. how can I fix all this? Yeah, yeah it was like, <laughs> that's not a change. Yeah, I have to repaint all the magic things. button in Photoshop will but, do everything uh, for you. That's yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> so this was helpful to find a way to introduce a system that will say, ah, this is my light source. This will be the result here. But for the local yeah. color, and because, also, as yeah. you mentioned, like this gray type of thing was a local color if it was lit by a white light. But the silhouette is always dark when you paint. You will never like make a silhouette uh, made out of the of the yeah, flat yeah. color, right? The of the not flat color. I ah, I do it sometimes. It's a uh, you can see how it uh, 
if it fits, for example, because I didn't know what color to paint, it was easier for me to start with a, a very basic black and uh, make the, 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 the silhouette. But uh, if I, I could also take the local color, of course, and paint the silhouette. But uh, it's like if you start with the, the full shadow, you can paint on top of it the local color and some shadow mm -hmm. can stay there. Like uh, it can be like uh, a leftover ambient occlusion. Yeah, right. You can paint on the other areas and you, you already have the shadow, for example. It also makes a uh, sense to add but the okay, to the silhouette instead of like removing the lighting from the silhouette, I think. At least in, in my mind, it kind of yeah, makes yeah. a lot of sense to just light yeah. up the, the scene instead mm -hmm. of like darkening it. Uh, definitely, yeah. And for the smart tool, because yeah. like, are you uh, using a lot of smart tool or it's just, as you said, a tool, mm -hmm. a convenient tool? Yeah, I used to use it a lot more. Of course, I was inspired for it by mm -hmm. Brad Rigney, a huge inspiration. Uh, but now it depends. Sometimes I will use soft brush because I find it uh, in uh, higher resolution images. I find it very hard to work with the smart tool. It starts lagging a lot. And um, so it depends in the situation. If I see some area and I say I want to make it blur uh, in that way, I will pick up the smart tool. Mm -hmm. But uh, I could do it other way too. Because for Often now it's when uh, you are painting faces easier. like i i notice you have this manner when you are painting faces they are not like extremely sharp there is only a slight sharpness for example in the eyes or in the corners of the of the mouth or something like this like you don't really make the whole portrait mm -hmm. like extremely sharp yeah i also have problem with anatomy because i don't know a lot of stuff so i try to make it them blur <laughs> 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 yeah I need to work a lot of. Um, I, I need to spend a lot of time on some uh, such anatomical element to it's make it appear good. One of the good. things that I have problems yeah. with, like I want to get good at anatomy, at faces, at this, at this, at that, and it turns out like, oh, okay, I need to get good at pretty much everything. So yeah. <laughs> where do I start now? Hey, it, it needs time. Uh, hey, you find the balance. Sometimes you do some training on. Uh, a little stuff for example of course mm -hmm. if in your work you are uh, forced to always include some uh, human mm -hmm. figure or something either you know it or not you are doing some training in an anatomy because they don't allow if you make something bad for example sometimes they say they say to me this leg is not correct fix it so by this uh, this uh, element of fixing going back and mm -hmm. forth you end up doing training in uh, anatomy yeah, for little me, by little it's like always it's not when I'm trying to paint something and i feel like okay i have no idea how the leg will look like this then it's like a strictly mm -hmm. time go next to the like mirror and just take some photos and i'll be like okay now i know how, yeah, yeah. how the legs looks like and little by little you improve your uh, that skill yeah, uh, that's right. yeah. so this guy it's still it will be a giant or not like what is the plan because uh, I, i'm kind of on the right <laughs> thing mm. yeah it's better if he is a giant i think but i, I will need to make him bigger maybe nice. let's see yeah because one of the things i remember when you were um, like painting it was also kind of amazing because when you were like asking or you said you you have no idea how to like what to add to a piece when someone like suggested to you what to <laughs> add like you just added it and <laughs> it was like there and it was like okay oh that was fun mate because a lot of interesting ideas came up with uh, yeah. the suggestions so if anyone has it any suggestion nice. what to add just just write it <laughs> to in the comments or yeah in the chat so just maybe, don't say you know yeah. space <laughs> if it will be safe to add to the painting then most likely it will appear yeah. in there yeah, it's mm -hmm. kind of funny. Yeah, no, I also don't work a lot with layers. For example, these layers are mainly like uh, save mm -hmm. steps, if I can say. It's more like progress. That's That brought me a little problem in work. I still have this today. Because uh, usually after some time in the end, they, un they ask for the file, which have all the and layers separated. Layer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. So what I do is I separate layers and I paint over 
like if mm-hmm. I had this body here, I would uh, mask it, copy, paste it, and I would uh, I would show exactly what I would be doing here. I would take this, I would hide it, and I would paint the background behind. Uh-huh. So I would yeah, uh, are repainting you familiar the, with the, the content thing. aware feel. Uh, ah, the the brass. Uh, yeah, spot healing brush. I think too, it was. It yeah. Yeah, in the newer spot versions healing. of Photoshop, you can pretty yeah. much erase everything you want. Like, you will just paint over this guy and <laughs> it will generate everything for you. Just use a huge stroke and it. Uh, just try to try <laughs> to select yeah. the guy as a whole, as one, so then it will get removed. I really like this this feature. Yeah, it's very. Hey, even in this stage, it was very helpful because you can easily yeah, and even if you uh, reduce like, the, the whole figure, then it will know. Okay, you don't want this 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 part, and then it will like yeah. pretty much generate everything. Like, <laughs> ah, that's a great yeah. uh, tool. Often I use it to for like a finished painting when I will like do some lens correction and everything, and then I'm like lacking the top and the bottom uh, part of the painting, so I just generate it and. It, most of the time it looks okay mm. yeah mm. yeah for example if now that i made him bigger i need to change the he will be darker mm. up here uh, also for example to make him uh, stand better in the environment he needs to he- to be affected by the atmosphere because now as i have it here there is this atmosphere thing and here we mm-hmm. see clear color which is not correct to be better this would have to be affected uh, by the screen and all this stuff it would have to be <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <that's> <laughs> it would have to be like that mo- yeah. more like that yeah so basically to... the aerial perspective yeah. But... everything yeah but i tend to add this uh, later because uh, if you introduce the atmosphere early on it causes problems if you want to change stuff because it makes the colors a lot more mm-hmm. complex. Instead of having one shadow for every every place, you would end up having uh, a shadow which is more affected by atmosphere. Uh, in another area, you you will have another uh, mm-hmm. influence. It's 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 harder. So I tend to put the atmosphere yeah, in the, the end. Also, one of the things that if you like add atmospheric like early then you will start painting details there's a huge chance you will like mess up like mess the values up like they will get too dark mm-hmm. or too light but have you been ever using yeah, yeah. the blending mode for the layers like the uh, the things when you open like a layer style for the blending uh yeah ah, the, the blend, no 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 the, the blend if um, that you have in here Ah yeah. yeah. Um, In my opinion, I think I use this like uh, when I wanted ever. to reduce. Oh. Yeah, I I don't know it very well. I used it to reduce mm-hmm. some white spots. I think when I was doing some selections, uh, but there there are oh, definitely cool. a lot so more uses, uh, uh, as you right say. Now. If you I can just, just paint like yeah. a solid white <laughs> thing on on top of everything, like on the new layer, like a solid Wait. white. It can be like a haze. Maybe not not like not this solid like a like ah, a white fog okay or something like this wait wait yeah okay make it like a bit stronger oh wait okay and then go to this layer style uh, and go with the lower like slider and press yeah, and press R, or just move it to the right. And basically it will like mm. only appear on something that is like lighter than this value that you selected. And mm. if you now will press Alt, like press Alt and move it to the right. Yeah. Like release it. I... Uh, re- release it somewhere. Wait. Press Alt. Yeah. And move it to the yeah. right side. Now it will make us, uh, once again, you need to like press Alt and mo- I guess it was Alt. Uh, Try once uh, again. Yeah, I have it. I have Alt and it uh, reduces inside uh, that selection. It should selection. make like a smooth transition, but it should like the, uh, it should like visibly, oh, okay, you got it. 
So ah. now you can yeah, like yeah, yeah. only have this thing, like like you can make a, s a really soft transition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, and it's cool. really cool yeah. if you want to add some highlights, for example, for your character. Because yeah. when I was like painting, for example, some speculars, you can pretty much duplicate the character, increase the levels for this guy and use this type of thing to, for example, to make a skin shiny only in the brightest areas. So you can like yeah, yeah. really easily add a lot of different cool things to it. So yeah, yeah it, this is a cool. Definitely for specular, for specular reflection, it mm -hmm. looks very it's effective. Like extremely easy. And especially if you are like duplicating, for example, the whole painting, you want to make everything darker, you just duplicate it, you make everything darker and use this slider so it will like only affect the really dark area, so it will bring way more. Mm, that's pretty good, man. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, all these tricks are helping in, uh, you find a way to create some things yeah. easier uh, and faster. Like that's my uh... most used type of thing ever in Photoshop at the moment. It works especially great with the photo textures because when you are like applying a texture it is not like a full texture like you do not get every single information out of the photo but you can like manipulate it so it will be like only for example the darks you will take you will only take the darks from the photo yeah and also there is a, 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 a question that have you been using hmm. gradient maps ever uh, yeah, in the older years, I was I used to take a piece mm -hmm. like this, for example, and I was uh, making it merged. And I remember I was running. Uh, where uh, was it? It is. It was in there. It was in there. I've, ah, you, you had it in there. It's in the middle. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Grab it up. Yeah. I was running such thing, and I was doing some trying out. For example, I remember mm -hmm. using a lot of this. And then I was playing around with uh, with this uh, blending mode. I was using yeah. this every day. I remember. But now. But uh, it was unpre it was unpredictable. It, it I couldn't uh, calculate light or something from mm -hmm. this. So I was mainly doing doing it for the effect. Uh, so I stopped doing but it. That's right why. Now combine it with the sliders from the layer styles. N yeah. Then this type of thing shines ah. like really shines because. If you will go, even if you will like not go with all the like blending modes, but now you can like really subtle add some mm. like colors to only some areas that you like. So yeah. combining this type of things like really creates a, a nice effects, I think. Yeah, you can play around. I would consider uh, adding such gradient map and stuff more like. Uh, Post mm -hmm. uh, effects, right. if I can say and like once that. I guess I... Right. So okay, if I, continue. yeah, yeah. Okay. I know. I would say that uh, I would just introduce these things when I finish the piece, and I was wanting to make some calibrations uh, in the colors mm -hmm. and stuff. Because once I saw, I guess it was uh, Ard Germ, Ard Germ. I I don't know how to pronounce it. The guy who is painting like all of the nice ladies and he is like really popular. Yeah. He, well, I have no idea if he still is, but yeah, he is Patreon. popular on the DeviantArt or used to be. But he was using a lot of like gradient maps to color the skin and everything. And sometimes I'm not sure if it was him, but he used this method like of the gradient map and the sliders to change the color of the core shadows. Like it was extremely easy to change like the whole vibe of the piece just by changing some core shadows. So it was like a really a cool method to use. So maybe maybe it will find a place in your workflow. So yeah. Yeah, who knows? Okay. I don't see many new questions. No, like some questions only. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So I guess we will we can change the topic for or is there yeah. anything that you will you would like to tell about mm -hmm. instead of me like asking a question uh, I don't know if people have questions about uh, mm -hmm. this technique about light uh, now I know that this is very fast here and doesn't include uh, all the the usual process that I do uh, for example I would add as, as I said earlier I would not I, I would not have added this uh, mm -hmm. atmospheric effect here because it creates trouble here visualizing now the the distance 
this mm. uh, giant appears very close now. But if I rush into things and make him uh, a part of this atmosphere, it will be very hard uh, later mm. to add uh, more equip, no, more equip and stuff. Uh, remove it, like uh, I guess you still have it on the layers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, that's true. But uh, yeah, it. Um, It's better if it if there is no atmosphere mm. in the beginning, and you put all things together unified, and then you introduce the so the depth. Much the uh, best way will be to start with like a really ambient light, like without any direct light, just yeah. figure everything out in the ambient light, and then just play with the with mm. the details of the light. Just then play yeah, the lamps uh, in there. Huh. I think also I remember in some uh, it was a video from uh, Sadi Safadi from uh, One Pixel Brass, how they say, uh, which he said that it it was always beneficial to be able to find uh, images that were of some neutral light, uh, so that they they could add later uh, their uh, the key light, the intense uh, light. Um, so I think. It uh, it uh, stood with me that I should also do something similar. It would be better to start with ambient light, have all the information, and if you want to hide more things in the shadow, you can take them to black. And if you want to add more light, you can increase the light in some areas. But uh, having the ambient uh, light uh, creating visible information everywhere was like uh, a main step. If you solve this. You have the, the image uh, mm. almost ready. Uh, we have the first suggestion you can find. to add to the painting, and is mm. from. <laughs> there is no way I'm going to read it because it's <laughs> actually in Greek. There is a B U C T W P E A <laughs> in Greek letters. <laughs> so yeah, I have no idea how to read it, but the idea was to add some horns to this guy ah yeah that's a nice idea it, it, yeah. it's easy for me now <laughs> nice Wait, nice. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah horns are yeah, always right. cool uh, horns on. <laughs> okay it's victoria <laughs> ah okay yeah i know it, yeah <laughs> i, was I trying, know yeah, i but know in transliteration <laughs> for the polish it will be like boots <laughs> Yeah. Almost. It's it's a close match. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the horns I think are like a guns for the for the military type of stuff. Like if you have a demon and if you will add some horns, it will always look good. Yeah. Mm. And some secondary horns. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's uh, it's an opportunity for extra details, uh, but yeah, it but needs a lot of I work to start looking better. For the martial arts, like hmm. what type of martial yeah. arts ah, were ah. you like learning? Yeah, I did uh, I did Aikido because uh, I knew about it and I wanted to try, and it was a surprise that I found in Corfu Island uh, such a thing. Uh, So I did uh, this kind of martial art. It's not uh, well known for um, as a very self-defensive, mm. if I can say, art. But uh, nevertheless, uh, all I think that all martial arts are uh, there to train mm -hmm. your body, uh, like constantly being on movement and stuff like that. Uh, it was nice, uh, and there are there are styles on that. Uh, For example, not all Aikido schools teach the same way. So our, our team was like more energetic, if I can say it was more rough, hmm. rough style. And for uh, how long? Of Aikido. Uh, you did any? Um, I did um, four oh. years. I think I had to stop because I didn't have time to spend more on on this nice. hobby, for example. Uh, but it was four years. We did, we went to seminars. It was a nice experience. Uh, I may continue so sometime. There I don't are know. Some type of belts, like the levels, or in there. Uh, yeah, it, it, there are uh, some. Uh, uh, there is there is a belt. You after a lot of years, you get to wear a hakama, like a big trouser, yeah. a black trouser. 
if you do a lot of years and pass uh, certain mm-hmm. uh, degrees. Uh, but it's not uh, similar to the other martial arts in, in that aspect. It's not also, also it's not a sport. It's not a there is no how we say competition uh, if so I can say it like is that. It's more about the movement, I yeah. guess, and it's really important yeah. thing thing I think to move, especially if you are like a freelance freelancer or an artist, just to move yeah, because yeah. like it's so easy exactly. to get like glued to the to the chair and like stop moving <laughs> and then you want to move and everything is cracking yeah, yeah i mean it's a uh, we we spend so much mm-hmm. time sitting on the chair so all these kind of things are uh, a good addition to the yeah, program that's right and also ah. as you said like the aikido is not you like the uh, defensive type of like mm-hmm. martial art but yeah. all my experiences with this type of stuff like go to the mm-hmm to the not the solution but to the you did the, wait i'm missing the word uh to the conclusion to the conclusion the that the best defensive yeah. martial art basically is running and if you can run like quickly it will be the best defense yeah. out there like it, this yeah. is the, the only thing exactly. that really matters <laughs> exactly but, yeah. exactly yeah, it's not something to get your mind like uh, i went there now i can be now i can beat everyone mm-hmm. it's not like that you you may find yourself in a situation that uh, you might this find can't happen someone with a knife if and there is a way like no martial yeah, art will exactly. like, help you with this exactly. type of thing if like you are not extremely exactly. like proficient in it so yeah knives are unfair uh, you you did uh, uh, martial for, arts for like almost half a year like a friend of mine like told me to go to some MMA so it was like a little bit more about the contact uh, and everything. Uh, but I was yeah. using it mostly as a cardio mm. and I stopped after like all this mm. coronavirus started type of thing. And now yeah. I'm a little bit too lazy to start it once again. Mm. Also, since <laughs> I don't yeah, really I want, like I feel I learned everything that I could learn and I will only improve on all of this basic type of stuff. But the risk of the contusion was like way too big, like all of these chokes and yeah, flips yeah. and everything and throwing someone on the ground and like just tackling everything like it was just asking for a contusion and yeah. once I like fell on a really straight arm with and my shoulder like did mm. this weird crackling sound and I was like yeah. uh-huh, okay my shoulder now is crushed <laughs> but Enough. fortunately it was not <laughs> and yeah, but I yeah. just it was like a nice experience to to have. Like maybe if Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because if there is one damage uh, to to our hands or something yeah, it, it's, it's like GG, game over, honest. you know. But, <laughs> yeah, but if someone yeah. will try to like choke me like to death, maybe I will survive for like 10 seconds longer because I maybe I will get the idea how to get out of some choking yeah. situations. Hopefully I wouldn't need yeah. to use any type of MMA ever but it was a nice experience in terms of cardio it was like extremely demanding because all of this like pretty much constantly running jumping doing something like yeah. it was a nice cardio training so yeah uh, how long uh, were the sessions like uh, one hour and some one hour, one and, hour half, and a half, half sometimes maybe almost yeah. two hours but really rarely yeah, yeah, one yeah. Had, like, the same. power to do more than like one hour like the, the yeah, mm-hmm. I'm asking because I remember how tiring it was uh, mm-hmm. doing all these things for all these hours. It was like after two hours, we yeah. were uh, dead. And sometimes because like the, the teacher was a friend of mine and he sometimes was doing this type of like a circuit type of training when you had the stations and everything. So this thing was like extremely tiring. But the thing that I hated most was like standing mm. in place and boxing, like air boxing as fast as you can. Uh-huh. And he was like doing, yeah. okay, just like do it fast. And now like the tempo, 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 like faster, faster, faster. And okay, the first, mm. like the first faster was fine. But on the third or fourth faster, I wanted to puke and I wanted to kill him. Like it was so extremely tiring. <laughs> But <laughs> yeah, but also funny thing because really yeah. often I see a lot of artists like let a lot of creatives are often like going to the places like gyms or some as you said aikido or some MMA because 
like for once for the movement but i often see a lot of artists are really able to um, commit themselves also to this type of thing like uh-huh, they have see, this yeah. thing to yeah, commit you... to this type of trainings so mm. yeah mm. and you are a little more used to uh, how we say it, to be patient with something because yeah, art for example time. it mm-hmm. needs a lot of patience That's right yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you don't really That's... like expect all of the immediate yeah. results. For like, example, I have been attending a yeah. gym for like a lot of years now. Like it's a slow as hell progress, to be honest. But <laughs> it was one of the things that I noticed. A lot of artists are actually jacked, and a lot of artists actually has some muscles mm-hmm. on them because they they spend mm-hmm. time in the gym also. But it's also a nice yeah. thing. Like if you are sitting in front of a computer for like ten hours. And then you can move, like actually you can move something. It's like wow, it's it's a nice feeling. Yeah, you feel yeah. the difference. Yeah. A... Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. That's yeah, true. Um. yeah, it's kind of fun. <laughs> so, for example, uh, what is the thing? Mm-hmm. Like going back to the art. Because like it's one of also one yeah. of the things that always bothers me when I'm like painting something, I know what I'm struggle on. For example, like what is the hard thing for me to do? You already mentioned the anatomy, but what else do you think is like the, yeah. the next step for mm-hmm. you? Next steps. Mm. Anatomy is a big uh, for me. The whole drawing is always uh, because I I paid a lot of uh, attention to lightning all these years trying to find how to work the light i think i neglected a lot of the drawing skills so Mm -hmm. usually the thing that takes time for me is uh, drawing correctly Uh, fixing some anatomy making the some uh, perspective of some items be more uh, uh, better positioned on some character for example Um, usually things that have to do with drawing and design but design i think is uh, is always something variable for example there are some projects that i don't have a lot of experience with mm-hmm. for example sci-fi when something is uh, sci-fi i have hard time uh, finding good design solutions mm-hmm. so i spend a lot of time trying to find uh, how the design will be uh, i mainly have difficulties in such uh, areas uh, because the rendering if you take away the mm-hmm. rendering what is there to solve it will be the design and how it yeah. is it is drawn yeah, that's right also with um, the science fiction the problem so is it's kind of hard to get l- really loose with all the details and rendering like with all yeah, the yeah. skins full and everything you yeah. can get a little bit more artistic like but with the hard surfaces exactly. it's it's hard uh, there is a question uh, it was previously like where do you draw the inspiration from nowadays i guess we talked yeah. about it like one like 30 minutes ago 40 minutes ago something uh, like this yeah mm-hmm. but it's a like usual if they want it's like um it's the games it's uh what you see uh, maybe some interesting photo some music that you hear i so i think i think inspiration by itself is not such a problem but it's mainly if you are able to to paint the image that uh, occurs in your mind after after you get some inspiration mm-hmm. from anything for example, you may get inspiration when you go for a walk somewhere, but uh, so I don't think it is a, it is a, some some kind of problem. I think all of us have a lot of inspiration, uh, and we get it from yeah. different sources. Sometimes it may be movie, sometimes also it one may of the be things that you you something. mentioned, like the inspiration, like with the experience, also will come. But it's also one of the things that I notice, like the more. I know and the better I get the less art blocks I have like mm. the less problems I have to start anything pretty much like the art, art yeah, blocks yeah. pretty much for yeah. me are like the things of the past most likely I just yeah. I just prefer not to paint today or not to make yeah. any art today because I just don't feel like it yeah, yeah. but I wouldn't call it an art block like I really rarely have a situation when I really want to paint but I have no idea what to paint or something like this like the more you mm-hmm. do the easier it will be yeah, yeah. and there is another question uh, where the username King Costas Art originated from? 
Yeah. I guess it's quite easy. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> yeah. no. The the king Costas uh, art. Uh, the king Costas was the first uh, in, in, idiotic, if I can say, it's, uh, um, nickname. It was when I was playing uh, uh-huh. Age of Empires. <laughs> <laughs> so I just said King Costas uh, because it was okay. like the Empire. <laughs> you know? yeah, because I was like so, always because, oh, okay, uh, King he can paint like a king. Okay, it's a king. Costas, Constantinos, yeah, yeah, okay, self explanatory so. and art. Okay, oh. I know where this came from. So oh, it was uh, from Age of Empires. Well, yeah, the, the history of the first nicknames. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. I just uh, kept it uh, in. I kept using it as a username mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And uh, from there, I decided I will keep it. It was like um, it was mm-hmm. a, a habit. Yeah, that. like at at so, one point, <laughs> you you are unable to change to switch your name. And I remember when I was yeah. like appear just appearing on the stage of like doing anything on the internet. Uh, I was like using like my first email account was like a pot for Eric what basically translates to monster Eric so it was like extremely like nice a nickname and later I remember when I had this like phase of being like an emo or something like this like I wanted mm-hmm. to have like this really cool really edgy nickname or something like this and I went with the <laughs> the title of the song from Avenged Sevenfold, I guess, and for like a long, for like a year or two, I was lo- using like a nickname, a second heartbeat or something like this, and it was so lame. Ah, and yes. later, I was like, I guess playing, yeah, it was playing Titan Quest. You ever play Titan Quest? Mm. Uh, no, but uh, that's one one more that I no, I want cool. to play mm-hmm. because it it's like Diablo like for it's example Diablo like but in you the, have Greece in there gameplay. so you should play it yeah but yeah you can later <laughs> tell us how how the Greece is portrayed in there but there's this Titan the final boss of the basic game a Typhon mm-hmm. uh, and I was like whoa he is really cool mm-hmm, yeah and also it was the first digital I have ever made was like with the mouse. It was based on the on this guy on the Typhon, and I felt like okay, Typhon, it will be Typhon from now on, and yeah. it just stayed with me like f- for like for forever. I, I think at the moment, like I wouldn't yeah, change yeah, it. I, I really like it, <laughs> and yeah, it's nice. You feel nice having it, like it's part of you now. Yeah, so, I really uh, embody it. Yeah, it's I, a nickname. I am the Titan from the Tartarus yeah. at the moment. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> And it's also kind of fun, like just to have a nickname. Mm, so, yeah. yeah, especially since like Eric Stigio is really hard to pronounce for like the vast majority of the people. Like in your case, you don't. Okay, you have like the whole name Constantinos Kantaridis. If written in yeah. in Greek, it's a problem to write for pretty much yeah. everyone if he is not from Greece. It has some. It has some. It has some characters that, uh, in if you make it, if mm-hmm. you make them Latin, they in Greek they are different. But I don't think they are they are so difficult as uh, you say some special characters in your uh, surname. Yeah, but for, for example, example, even like, the, not like uh, the the last letter of my surname is might be a problem because a lot of different like pages don't really understand what this letter are, and I get like the empty yeah. box. And I can imagine if you will like type your name using the the Greek letters, <laughs> most likely your yeah. <laughs> your like nickname will be like the empty boxes or something like this. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it happens, yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's but, different. Uh, as I said previously, I remember the struggle to like remember how to write your name and surname properly, and I was like always like how to write it, like how where. But yeah, it's kind of funny. Yeah, it's very big. Uh... <laughs> mm-hmm. And you have any like second name or something like this? Uh, no, we don't usually have uh, like the Spanish oh. guy, <laughs> you know, yeah, um, which they, have a lot of like names in between. They have like <laughs> 10 names, 10 <laughs> surnames and everything. Like, you ever heard about the Picasso? What was his full name? It ah, was no. like, wait. Oh, no. Uh, because it's kind of funny because the Picasso full name is Pablo Diego Jose Francisco de Paula Juan Nepomuceno Maria de los Remedios okay. Cipriano de la Santisma Trinidad Ruiz y Picasso. 
It was like, okay, that's yeah, a whole I just essay. try to remember this type of thing, so I, I have no idea. Like, okay. Now I understand why he is a public yeah. caster, and that's all. Uh, okay, yeah. there is a question. Yeah, a Can you guys beginning. advise some books, courses on realistic materials, light and shading? So I guess just go first, because I already have an answer for this one. Uh, mm. uh, yeah. Because I I haven't seen a lot of stuff. It's been a long time. Uh, the last thing I remember watching about uh, like tutorial things were reading Lumis books and uh, stuff like that. And uh, of course, uh, Craig Mullins PDF. I remember such things. I I don't have knowledge about uh, specific courses, so I can't easily advise about that. Uh, what I can say from my side would be to. If you want to understand more about materials and how light interacts with them, it it is beneficial for you to search uh, how 3D programs reproduce, how these programs simulate the light, so that you can take all these parts and recreate yourself the recreate the simulation of the interaction between material and light. Yeah, I will post a link. Uh because like just recently i discovered this course it was from the domestica it mm -hmm. was the guy called samuel smith as i said previously he was the one doing the light keyframes and everything for the klaus and actually like his process as i said previously is really similar to yours but yeah. a little bit more like comic-y like kind of like cartoony type of stuff mm -hmm. yeah yeah, More but like, yeah, in my opinion, yeah. it was like one of the best courses I have ever bought. Like it was extremely easy to understand, especially since I kind of knew what I was looking for. And I kind of had the idea how, for example, you were working, but I was missing this one something that will click this type of thing in my mind. Yeah. And this course that pretty much did it perfectly. So in my opinion, this course. And also there is this cool book written by Scott Robertson about how to render and how to draw. So I think these two are like the really basic type of things, especially if you are just starting. And there is this book by uh, James Gurney and it's Color and Light, I guess, mm -hmm. and Imaginative Realism. So I will write it, uh, mm -hmm. Imaginative Realism. And light by James Gurney. So I guess these are like the best books in my opinion out there yeah yeah these are ones i have uh, i have also checked uh, some of these mm -hmm. everything is good it will give you a lot of ideas but from there you will have to go deeper to understand why something appears the way it appears yeah, it's easy to talk uh, about like the color theory and yada yada and everything but if you don't understand mm -hmm. like how it actually applies in the real life there is like it does not really matter if you know like that the red is the opposite of green or something like this. Like, what what does it really mean? Mm. To be honest. So yeah, and also ah. it's one of the things that is really sometimes weird for me, especially when I like started doing this a little bit more sciencey approach to the light when painting. Like this, not really too obvious mm -hmm. like results that you will get, for example, while mixing red with green and you will get a gray or black or something like this. Like the things that you don't really uh, expect to happen with the colors. It's sometimes mm -hmm. this is really interesting. Like you paint something and this is the result that you will get, but also it's a scenario that you don't really see in real life that much often. So sometimes yeah. it will give you a weird results, but yeah. it's kind of funny. I'm still waiting for the for the character that you will add in here. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> forgot. I'm, I'm still wondering still where, where he will be and how how tall he will be. Mm. Because yeah, like this painting kind of reminds me of one of the older paintings you have done on the stream with the dragon on top of the tower, where I suggested you to make the ah, yeah. the knight like holding the wall like with his back like hiding from the giant. And it's a similar scenario where, like, I can really easily imagine a knight, like, standing uh, behind a rock, hiding or something like this. Yeah, we could put, put some rock here, I guess. Like... Um, uh, and then this uh, is the beauty of the painting. I will put a rock in here. Poof, rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like... <laughs> yeah, like, uh, create uh, some mm -hmm. base for him to... 
position himself. But I think I will have to change more of the perspective here because I want the scale to for the creature to appear a lot larger now mm. if I am about to place a smaller character. So I have to see how to It's one of the things on. like I said it previously and I will say it many times, but how how it looks like how you don't really care about the brush strokes on the ground. Like this <laughs> this is the hardest thing to overcome, like just to stop caring about everything in the painting. Uh... Mm. <laughs> yeah, I, maybe because I, this, I'm not sure what I will do, but I I paint some uh, yeah. silhouette about, for example, the rock. It, it helps a lot that is uh, such an organic form, because mm -hmm. as we said before, if it was uh, sci-fi, yeah. it would be a lot harder to. It would be. It would need more, more concentration, more time, yeah, there's more a small thinking. Question for you: yeah. Does your character have a third leg, or is he so gifted? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I think I was trying to make this leg be in front, but I screwed up, so, so I may need gifted. to do something. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Yeah, that's the problem with yeah, bad anatomy. And also with the characters that have <laughs> yeah. four legs. Mm, yeah. It's kind of funny. I know. Yeah, I remember once when I was like painting a troll, uh, like extremely long time ago, back in the days, and I remember like actually painting a monster with that that has <laughs> another leg between his legs, and the terror that you will get when like a naked troll for example with like this huge donk will like run at you and will try to kill you <laughs> and you know like the killing won't be the last thing that will happen today and this will be the pure terror yeah. <laughs> in my opinion like if you were if you were to encounter this type of creature yeah so. You introduced it in some D&D &D adventure <laughs> I guess I guess once them fight, I but... actually did like there might be a monster that was like really wanted to do bad things to the to the characters but i don't remember if anything really happened probably mm -hmm. probably yes but i don't really remember <laughs> to be honest <laughs> well, i have to separate it somehow to be more visible <laughs> for the rock but Using Let's some see. <laughs> yeah, but I will reduce the effect a little. Is there and... a reason that you are using a fill instead of the opacity? Uh, no, but I know that I. It's just a habit, but I know that some uh, layer modes uh, react differently with the fill layer. It works uh, because for yeah. the yes, the line for the line art. Uh, but only I guess if you have I like a black we... background for the for the actual light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. I just say that if it is to be different in some parts, maybe I would be using fill everywhere. And uh, if the layer mode is uh, uh, has some special effect with a uh, fill mo fill uh, layer uh, opacity, I will I will have one. I mm -hmm. will be using always this one and have the effect. So if you use fill in mm -hmm. normal layer, it's just the similar, the same as the opacity. Okay, I so... almost forgot about the thing that I wanted to ask you uh, about your old works because I know you prepared the folder with some oh. old works. So I have, I have them in some in places that yeah, I can find them because easy. I guess at the moment you are at the peak of the of the viewers so it's like mm. around 10 or 15, 16 I guess nah, so okay. yeah it's a crazy amount uh, but yeah it's a peak at the moment almost a peak we yeah. we had 7 and, uh, 18 was the top some... but yeah <laughs> if you could so, <laughs> Wait, show us some let old me find works this. because I have a lot of old works but I think I had some uh, older in some I guess certain 2009 is old fight. enough I guess there is a, in one place there was a, like very old. Uh, let me see. Or challenge. And because it's also one of the things mm -hmm. that I don't really like about some, like for example, the art station portfolios. They are always nice, 
and they don't really include all these old artworks. For example, as Deviant Art did, because <laughs> on Deviant Art, pretty much no one was bothering to remove any old artworks, and you can always see the whole spectrum of the of the things. Yeah. There was a very old one that uh, it would be nice to see because it was like anime mm-hmm. stuff I was doing. Uh, but uh, I can't remember. Maybe here. I can't remember. Uh, here, but here I have uh, a lot of old I works uh, from uh, from when I was up when I was uploading in uh, Art Station, for example. Uh, I was trying a lot with rendering uh, and bad drawing. For example, this had uh, anatomy drawings I was doing at that time, and I was trying to do some shading. Uh, these are all with a tablet, I think. I uh-huh. had the tablet at this time. How old are these? 2009? 2009, yeah. Most of them. Uh, I was trying and failing a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was trying to create something, but I didn't know how uh, colors would work and stuff like that. Yeah. It's a lot of... Uh... Yeah, but I never was finishing yeah, any work. Like that was the like start. Finishing, I think, is um, it's actually the art it, yeah, itself. To finish a painting. I, I was doing a lot of such uh, drawings, even in paper, but bo- mm-hmm. also in digital trying to find the the basics mm-hmm. of anatomy for example a lot of such stuff um, ah here i found some very old the, uh, 2006 nice. <laughs> nice. here we you go okay <laughs> That's mm, this actually gives here a lot of go. hope to be honest <laughs> yeah look yeah i think these were the first steps in Photoshop, I was trying to make some mm-hmm. lines clear and uh, feel. Yeah, yeah, these are all, these are 2006, uh, before I went to school, uh, like... Uh, yeah, you can also see, like, the development in the signature, like, every every signature is a little bit different <laughs> before it took the final turn. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Um, what? Um... Because I was doing a lot of sketches, there are a lot of uh-huh. pieces uh, yeah, here. It's, it's fine. Everything was a try, for example. Yes. I don't remember here. 2010. This oh, is 2010. It starts to look okay, I guess. And the signature is almost, I was playing almost a lot its final form. <laughs> yeah. I was playing a lot more with shading in this, like trying to reach mm. some results. Uh, what else I have here? What is this? Some tutorial, you know. <laughs> I think this helped mm-hmm. me a lot doing, trying to do this process uh, tutorials or stuff like that. I think it helped me a lot to trying to form a yeah, certain it... workflow. I was also able to see faults mm-hmm. in my work more easily it's also by one doing of the this. things that I have noticed when I started teaching the like actual mm-hmm. need to organize my knowledge it was really helping me like a lot it still is to be honest to to organize everything that i know to be able to like to to say it to someone so yeah and also if anyone is yeah, yeah, it helps. does not know uh, constantinos also on his art station has like a lot of these small tutorials when he explains and how he is doing all of the paintings and a lot of a step pro like a step videos gifs more likely uh how mm-hmm. the pieces came to be so also it's one of the in my opinion one of the best places to actually learn about the the process yeah thanks like it, mm-hmm. here a, a very old landscape if you want <laughs> i remember my my first landscape uh, and it was really similar <laughs> but yeah <laughs> yeah i always considered the landscapes to be yeah. extremely hard i it didn't know what to me. do how to like at the moment I prefer like doing all the characters and everything but the environments is like my Achilles something <laughs> like it's the yeah <laughs> yeah yeah the, the weak spot you uh, just got a comment yeah. that wow you used to be mortal <laughs> so yeah 
<laughs> really. he, he used to be mortal now he is not <laughs> but, uh, I think there is a lot of images it would be tiring to I can't find specific I was doing mm -hmm. drawing I was trying to find some heads to draw I was doing some bodies and then I would uh, try some environment I was trying to do shading I was trying to, to tackle all these things as as good as I could, uh, mm -hmm. for example. Uh, so there are a lot of pieces who have a little bit of anatomy training, a little bit of trying to render something, a little bit of composition training and stuff. Here I don't know Do what I was trying to do. Maybe have like some artworks <laughs> that were like it was like this artwork that was like this this something when something clicked when you really felt like this is the next stage for you. Mm -hmm. Or maybe there are some on no, your digital art or art station or something like this. Or what is your favorite piece that you have done to date? I think uh, at that time what I was uploading in Debian Art was like the the most finished stuff I could do mm -hmm. at that time. For example, when I uh, I considered the, an artwork to be to, to include the elements that I wanted to try at that time, I used to post that mm -hmm. uh, image because I thought, oh, finally in this one I tried, I managed to get the colors somehow correct. I managed to get the anatomy a little more better. So I was posting the pieces that were more finalized, mm -hmm. if I can say. Uh, but uh, because the the for each piece always the training was in my mind i did i didn't do the artwork uh, caring a lot mm -hmm. about the subject matter for every piece i was trying to to solve something in shading and stuff like that so everything is a it's most a forward is a try is a try out mm -hmm. yes i was trying to improve in some uh, aspect for example i was doing some things like that which was a click in uh, some shading aspect, for example. I was in the end, I was trying blur uh, mm -hmm. smudge tool, and I was happy yeah, with it. It looks okay. Probably. It looks really fine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so every little thing. Uh, then I was happy with some things. I I stabilized the process by putting down in writing how this process went, uh, how to do do mm -hmm. some shading like a sculpture and stuff. Uh, so every piece had a little bit of uh, of an element I was searching for. Well, these are all ten years old. I think this. Wow. Yeah, and I was repeating to myself, try hard. No, I you also <laughs> used to like write something like this and place it on the wall, and I was yeah, like, yeah. Oh, okay, fine, I will. I guess I will try. So for your favorite yeah. piece, like, what is your favorite piece that you have done to date? Or you don't have this type of artwork? I don't think I have something that to call a favorite. Like, uh, I don't know. I think all the latest ones, when I find something, I consider it the updated version. Like I'm ha I'm uh, mm -hmm. happier with this piece because uh, I managed to, to make it faster or uh, mm -hmm. better lighting. So it's not a specific piece, it's more like uh, what uh, I managed to solve, for example, in the current uh, mm. period. Oh, yeah, not, uh, here there are some old... Ah, here. Super, super <laughs> 2005. <old>. Wow. <laughs> nice. <laughs> My God. You even... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I wanted to do animation and anime nice. like that. Well, uh, as as the man of Sparaki said, you, you really used yeah. to be mortal. <laughs> then. But the thing you <laughs> really need to admire is the is the um, the signature. Like every single one is different, and one even has a bevel link on on it. Uh, yeah, mm. the effects. Yeah. Okay, the, this is quite <laughs> amazing. Different. This actually gives hope to people. Everybody should see, should see <laughs> this type of thing. Wow. Yeah. A mm. lot of different things. Uh, and uh, I was taking part in uh, in these challenges that there were mm -hmm. in uh, concept art. 
the character of the week, creature mm-hmm. of the week and stuff like that. And of course I was failing, especially in the beginning, there was like a, a zero mm-hmm. vote for the artwork. But I keep pushing it. It's it was nice because you could see, you could feel some improvement. Yeah, especially when, when you uh, get like a first upvote or first like, then you yeah. really feel yeah. like you made it. <laughs> <laughs> like this is, yeah. But yeah. Well, this is cool. Yeah. yeah. A lot of I don't remember what this. This is 2010. I think I was happy there and with the values, and I was coloring with some strange way. I think maybe color layer and some overlay. But to be honest, it has this remember. vibe to it. Like, if someone will show me this type of thing, I guess I will be able to guess it was yours. Like, it it has this something. <laughs> in it. Ah, a lot of different tries. I think here I was trying uh, selections with lasso tool and the uh, gradients. So it it was not that much about the subject. It was totally random and just mm-hmm. doing forms and stuff. Uh, but I was trying to last nice. here. These are with with the mouse, mm-hmm. I think. There's a These question. Are... What was the first fundamental that was a breakthrough on making your process easier? Yeah, I I think it was the understanding of uh, looking at things like 3D objects. And I remember I had a sketch where I said, imagine uh, the brain being a 3D scanner mm-hmm. or something like that. So I started uh, feeling the objects like instead of seeing them as 2D shapes mm-hmm. on the paper, I was starting to feel them as uh, 3D objects. So it that was a, the, the, that helped a lot about thinking how to solve some uh, problems. Here are some old studies I was doing. About perspective view with human figures and it's all wrong <laughs> yeah look at this oh god it's beautiful <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. yeah stuff like that yeah the worst part is to be yeah. honest if someone will tell me to draw something like the thing that you showed previously to be honest i feel like the yeah the this like one. the my first try will look exactly like this so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard. If I try to do it now, I will do it uh, like that. <laughs> it's hard. It, it, uh, I think uh, I was inspired to do stuff like that because there was a guy again in Corset Art. It was the name was Akadobu, mm-hmm. Akadobu, something like that. And it had all these crazy scenes with perspective and a lot of figures with perfect mm-hmm. anatomy in them. But uh, he disappeared from the world. I don't know what he's doing. He was very, mm. he was great he at this part, profoundly. and I was inspired. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you you he already disappeared. got like the the patch of not being mortal anymore, so <laughs> like <laughs> maybe the next part is transcendence. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of uh, try out and failings here, yeah. but it's kind of fun. Eh? These are t- 2010, all these but are 2010. But you can clearly see the inspiration of the Icewind Dale and all the Baldur's Gate and the classical RPGs. Yeah. It's, it's easy to know them. Uh, these were uh, always, every time I was, I was watching uh, an image from that game, I was like, okay, mm-hmm. I want to paint now. So, uh... Yeah, I kind of feel like painting right now. But... Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I cannot at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this was with the reference. To improve in the previous step, I was trying in the other. Uh, I did some other tryout, and I was trying to use more reference mm-hmm. to try to set up a scene. There's also another uh, question that have you studied composition more specifically? No, about composition, uh, I was uh, watching all the basics about uh, uh, all this mm-hmm. uh, rule of thirds and uh, how Loomis uh, was doing some. Dynamic lines. I don't know dynamic yeah, subdivision. Was, I can't remember exactly. I guess how. in one book he called it the informal subdivision or something like this. Yeah, yeah, informal subdivision. But um, I, when I was trying to do something with that, I was feeling very mm-hmm. restricted. Mm-hmm. Like I was making the grid, and then I was trying to fit things I can inside. Imagine how it was like really and, useful back yeah. in the days when you were like mostly doing all of these advertisements yeah. and this type of stuff when you really actually yeah, need yeah. A grid. For all the typography and everything, and but align. yeah, it, it yeah. can be limiting, I guess, at the moment. Mm. Uh, 2008, here, 
I <laughs> plus one. I... <laughs> yeah, I was trying oh, things like nice. that. Like I was uh, shading this with the mouse and the alt uh, key, and uh, then uh, I was thinking like I managed to learn how alt works. Nice. Whatever. Yeah, plus one right now. <laughs> yeah. oh. <laughs> okay. Ah. This was nice. Trying stuff. <laughs> And for the painting, because like we yeah. already talked about games and all the inspiration, what what mm. are the artists for you that were like the biggest inspiration? Like if you mm. were to name like three um, your favorite top three artists of all time, are there any? Of course, of course, uh, Craig mm -hmm. Mullis is on the top. It's like a very big inspiration. Uh, then for sure Justin Sweet and Vance Kovacs. Uh, I firstly, I mainly looked at Justin Sweet works, but then I saw a lot more works from uh, his partner mm -hmm. Vance Kovacs. I love them both. Uh, and also Koskoniotis, which I'm not sure if a lot mm -hmm. of people I know him uh, in our days. Uh, he was doing uh, illustrations for uh, Warhammer and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, he was i saw him first time in the concert art he did some amazing drawings and uh, he, the values with he was drawing with some special kind of contrast mm -hmm. if i can say like that and uh, he was very inspiring to me and then um, jamie jones was mm -hmm. uh, another artist i was looking a lot but i think mainly craig mullins was mm. uh, nice the biggest inspiration if i can say so the, uh, how he managed to to show texture with these uh, random strokes, how he knew about the light mm. and he described uh, inside his PDF, you could see that he knew why the light was appearing like that. It was the first time I saw someone thinking of it logically, like uh, not simply put yellow, uh, yeah, put right. warm light here, put cold shadow. He was like he knew that light will reflect there and stuff like that. Like there, there was a logic. Uh, was there a was big... some thinking behind it instead of yeah. just doing art for the sake I... of making art. Yeah. Some concept art. I I I was doing some work, mm -hmm. if I can say, for uh, non-paid projects. Because at that time I thought it it would be cool to yeah, take part for, the sake of for them. It's nice. uh, I did Usually some I stuff. don't advise like working for free, but sometimes it will just happen, yeah. and sometimes it's better just to work for free for <laughs> a project that has no funding, just for the sake of working at something, just to improve. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's a question. Uh, would you be willing to teach <laughs> if were asked? It it is a I would um, actually like to do it at some point, but uh, for now there is no time to. If I wanted to make some lessons and stuff, I would have mm -hmm. no time to do. But uh, in the future, maybe in the near future, I would like to swift towards that direction of teaching. Uh, I am first in line. But for now, it's... is asking. I, I am first in line. <laughs> <laughs> the, the first spot is yeah, already yeah, occupied. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, it's a nice thing. Um, maybe after some time, you are uh, getting tired with. Uh, with work uh, in the same routine way and you want to take uh, the mm -hmm. teaching way but because i always uh, liked doing tutorials and stuff like that i always felt that uh, yeah, i would I like to do this uh, like naturally. for me like uh, for yeah. the vast majority of like my art endeavor i was like also a teacher because i'm mostly like teaching the traditional type of arts for the entry mm -hmm. exams at, for the academia of fine arts and etc but as i said previously like it was and it still is really like once it's really humbling because like you always need to like work on these fundamentals but the need to organize mm. all of this knowledge this is this is what it, it's doing for me like yeah. this is why i like teaching because i really need to organize all my knowledge and even if after like seven years i still like discover some like tricks to explain something faster mm -hmm. in a better manner that people will like understand better and like they will grasp the idea quicker so it, it's also really yeah. helpful 
but it needs a lot of time to get all this knowledge and uh, yeah, be able to present it. The uh, whole different story of like being a dart. I guess it's also a topic that Stan Prokopenko and the other guy that I always forget how he's how how he's called the he, they are doing the draftsman podcast and they were also discussing this type of stuff mm. that you have a lot of really great artists that are like extremely good at art but are terrible at teaching like they mm. cannot like teach by uh -huh. but they can do amazing type of stuff but on the other hand you have like all these amazing teachers that pretty much know way better than they actually can do this type of things so they are better teachers than than artists yeah so yeah i was always yeah, afraid this will happen to me that i will be a better teacher than an artist because it will be scary for me i want to be better at art instead of teaching but i hope i hope it will be like I, this i think if someone continues to do training mm. uh, he stays on top yeah, of I, I uh, things i mean about this i guess with naimu where like they also said in this podcast it's easy to fall into a trap of like the teacher trap or something like this where if you are yeah. teaching like the people who are less like experienced than you it's easy to forget that you really need to improve your art because you already are better, yeah, yeah. like quotes better than them in terms of art but but yeah and for the story what was like your most hated commission you have you had ever do <laughs> hate it I, I i think it's maybe it's there in terms of uh, challenging because there were some uh, these scenes with a lot of uh, people on them and stuff it was very hard i remember having some challenging uh, order like that and it was uh, wait i remember something else one was such with battle scene and stuff and the other was like a city overview and it mm -hmm. was uh, i had to make every little bit need to have detail even the housing in the background oh, okay. uh, these were very hard it was a overview of a town for some work uh, um, i don't know all these works that had a lot of uh, mm -hmm. changes it was uh, annoying after yeah, some time the, the for example uh, it it would be a month full of changes like uh, okay yeah, this is always <laughs> where i say like if you have like an agreement they can only make free changes or something like this then you can sleep mm -hmm. like without any problems <laughs> yeah. i guess i know this post from yeah. the lumis book <laughs> Uh, ah. I, I think it's exactly Standard, the yeah. from the Lumi's book when <laughs> yeah. he was striking someone and yeah. there was the other character laying on the ground like covering himself <laughs> from the sword. Yeah. No, that's nice. Yeah, I, I mean, I had read that book, or not only the one, all the books that he had, so many times, again and again and again. It was like the basic thing I was yeah. reading all yeah, the Lumi's time. Yeah, books are, are really great. And, oh. Yeah. So at the moment you are not really and, like working uh, with back the then, traditional pencils and everything, right? I, I do work with some pencil and stuff because sometimes uh, okay. when I start the work and I want to do something more relaxing uh, instead of mm -hmm. staying in the computer, uh, I pick some small papers and I do some rough sketches of the work uh, that I have to do, like uh, maybe some small compositions very quickly with a pencil. Uh, maybe the a rough uh, pose of the character. I think I have some. Maybe I had some images. I do very rough drawings of the of the of the piece I have to design, and uh, it it is more mm -hmm. relaxing for me sometimes instead of uh, sitting in front of Photoshop and uh, all this thing with a bug here and I can. Uh, mm. Sometimes it's uh, easier to do it to do the beginning stages in pencil some rough sketches so i lately i am working a little bit more with the pencil but for the rough uh, nice. stage not for something detailed okay. not at all yeah all this rank looks nice yeah. like you can clearly see the amount of work you had to put to be in the place you are in now <laughs> And I guess maybe I asked it previously, like about like your future plans and everything. But if you were like to say, what is like your next goal in terms of art? Uh, 
mm-hmm. in terms of art i i definitely want to keep improving my knowledge of light like i i want as much as possible to have very few uh, questions about how things look mm-hmm. why things look the way they look uh, so there will be improvements in uh, the way I understand the atmosphere a lot more. Uh, how mo- how much more I can understand scattering of light. Um, mm-hmm. Some th- specific elements about some materials that I may not so know at the moment. So there are. It's not like a goal. Of... Like you want to work for this, this, and that. It's just the goal is to improve. Ah no. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't have some speci- specific oh, company okay. that I would. Uh, like my mind now it's not in the work no, no. aspect of the no, thing I, I was not expecting like uh, i want to improve the some technique mm-hmm. uh, if i can and uh, other than this i would like to continue with the programming and uh, develop continue developing the mm-hmm. with vr uh, doing some stuff in there so th- this would be my goals and maybe uh, uh, the other plan I would have, like long term, to be able to transfer some designs into real world. Like I would like to play with some physical uh, things, like start uh, uh, working with metal and wood and making some construction based based on some designs I could make. I would like to go to nice. such stuff. <laughs> There's also a question: Do you think being competitive is a motivation, or do you get most of your drive from passion for learning and improving? Um, I think if you if you become the strictest uh, critic of your work, for example, you will uh, you will be your own you will, you will be fueling your own competition with yourself. Like you will want to be better and better because uh, you will. There are a lot of elements that mm-hmm. that uh, help with this. For example, you want to be doing your work a lot easier, so you you have uh, you want to become better at your work because. You want to improve your speed, mm-hmm. how easily you make a piece. Uh, so I don't think there is a need to be. Uh, I want to be better than this it's guy. It's also really hard to think be you... actually better than someone. Like you can be better in some aspect. Yeah, it's aspect, different. It's it's really hard to tell. Yeah. I guess there is this guy on the yeah. YouTube. Like he is the IFBB pro, Greg Dusset, and I really like his approach to pretty much everything because like pretty much his mantra is to train harder than last time and just try to be a mm-hmm. better version of yourself. So I guess it really applies also to the painting because like yeah. if you have done one study today, do two studies like yesterday and just yeah. not yesterday, tomorrow and just like keep improving and just be better version of yourself. But yeah, yeah. if there is a competition, like you said, yeah. like all these challenges or, and everything, Basically, the goal of the challenge was to be better at than the the rest, so I guess it can be yeah. like a motivative motivation type motivating. Hey, type it's a, I think we have a, we I think we have a healthy competition. Mm-hmm. At least we had. I I can't remember bad examples of competition. Yeah. Uh, it was more like oh I I can't reach you yet, but I will. It was like mm-hmm. in this style was not very aggressive maybe now with the uh, with the new things with the youtube and stuff and uh, like that maybe things went towards other uh, style of competition but uh, yeah. i don't remember anything any unhealthy competition i was doing some character of the week i was getting zero votes and okay i want to try better to, mm-hmm. to reach the result that the other guy was doing uh, make it better and stuff like that learn how yeah, to do the same like thing being extremely competitive like in this okay. field because to be honest is not that many people actually doing art on like a mm. really good level i think maybe when i was like talking about it like the only way i can like say how many art like people are doing actually art are like the common uh, not common uh, not casual uh common friends mm. on facebook yeah, like when you yeah. have the same okay, amount of friends, the same friends as someone, I guess it's around one, mm. like 1500 or something like this. Maybe this is the total amount of the actually artists mm. in the field working on something. So it's a lot, but to be honest, it's not yeah. that much if we consider how many. Yeah, yeah. yeah, in a bigger scale. So if you consider yeah. like that one yeah, project also. actually might need like 500 images, it will like still be a lot of work so 
if you will be like extremely competitive and if you will try to be like really a dick to someone just to be to tell them like oh i am a better artist than you i don't really think it will like be a good thing for you to do it will be like people won't like you and they won't most likely hire you <laughs> if you are like not nice mm, yeah. person yeah that's a big aspect of how you are as a person mm -hmm. you have to yeah that's right because yeah with uh, i see a lot some clients for example choose uh, based on the whole package not only the skill yeah, set sometimes if i can say like that choose like the they, like quotes ah. less skilled artist but yeah who is uh, who is willing yeah, to learn more a, and a nice uh, can can to, take to work with yeah so that's right yeah. yeah personally if i were to choose someone to for example for a team if i would like making any team i guess i would prefer to have some friends that i actually like spending time with instead of like yeah. having the most skilled guy ever but if yeah. i will get a combination of both for example for all the guys that i invite in here i get the combination of both mm -hmm. so we, it, it's going nice for me yeah. at the moment <laughs> so yeah <laughs> it was kind of fun yeah. okay we are uh, mm -hmm. i also had this small book uh, I'm calling it ass book because it was able to fit mm -hmm. in the ass pocket. <laughs> and I was doing, even in the army, I was trying to you do a little bit army? of training here and there. When I, yeah, yeah, when I went uh, to to do ah, my months, mandatory, if I can say like that. <laughs> oh, how many? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How long? So I, I was, it was uh, oh, nine months only. Quite a long time. So, yeah. Oh. yeah. But... Uh, with such little books you can still yeah. <laughs> continue and how was your time in army like because at the moment in poland it's not mandatory yeah, yeah. like thanks god it's not because i would die in army i guess but um, i can imagine it being a really <laughs> interesting experience it depends on the place you are uh, positioned uh, in the place i, I was mm -hmm. in cyprus there it was a little more strict in uh, everything they did like the the training was more uh, uh, more tiring mm -hmm. and more uh, how can i say um, they were paying attention to more things than no, they okay. do so in other example, places like you uh, really need like a tidy everything no wrinkles and everything uh, okay yeah 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 because they were passing every morning and if it wasn't like mm -hmm. uh, stretched they would say okay now you oh, won't go out nice. for example or something like that and we had a lot of, we had a lot of exercises to do so you couldn't have a lot of time to mm -hmm. to stay there i was doing this mainly when i was in such position where i had to guard uh, for some hours uh, the guns and stuff like that there were some times where i could uh, make some some of this and um, but yeah as an experience it was nice experience i mean I had the opportunity to shoot with some mm -hmm. guns, heavy guns and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, it was a good push, like it was like I want to do art my job and I never want to do mm -hmm. something like that yeah, again, for I example. Uh, also, <laughs> but I think the the military type of stuff can also be a really good thing to train discipline or, or something like this, because like you mm -hmm. really need yeah. to be disciplined. And I often heard like if you go to the military, you once you like get disciplined in there, you will never lose the discipline, like the ability to to actually work at something. So it it could be beneficial. Yeah, There's yeah. also a question: Did you ever feel like you want to quit art, give up, and go be a monk? I guess everybody did. Mm, no, <laughs> I think I, to 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 leave this uh, career, for example, I was uh, between. Uh, uh, music and uh, and art so I decided when I decided that I will do mm -hmm. I will be doing painting I don't think I, I went back on it like I kept pushing even when I was feeling like oh maybe these months I, I'm not improving mm -hmm. very much maybe I will leave it I, I couldn't think a lot like that it was like a, how I can say I promised to myself I will make it so I couldn't afford to fail if That's I can a really say like good that. Attitude. Like I felt many times that I want to quit this type of <laughs> like endeavor, but I guess I kinda get bored 
quitting after two days. Like I quit, and two days later I was like, yeah. oh, I'm bored. Like, <laughs> I, I go back. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't quit anymore. Yeah, that's nice. So yeah. <laughs> Well, but the, the sizes of these folders like actually are quite impressive because if I were like to open my folders with old works, maybe I guess I don't have them because maybe I removed them, but I guess I were nowhere uh, near. No, I, maybe I just got like got lost them while doing some sort of format. I guess I should have some folders with the old works, but maybe maybe one day I will try to collect all of these together. So maybe I will see how they look like together <laughs> yeah I, I didn't want to delete mm -hmm. these old ones because uh, I, it, it is yeah, a part of the right. journal like it's nice sometimes to see yeah I guess now went. like I don't really imagine yeah. like you going often to these folders and just like reviewing all of this type of stuff yeah so it can be <laughs> like a small <laughs> mm. ah. Here, I think I was trying to see how much time it would take me to reach such a point. Like, it take three hours and 38 mm. minutes to get uh, and now this. Now, within three hours, you can <laughs> finish was, a painting. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> there, there is an improvement. It was like... <laughs> nice. Yeah. Okay, I guess we are over two hours. We are closing to two hours and 30 Whoa. minutes. I guess we can call it a day at the moment. So, I did another okay. soldier. I'm oh, sorry. Or maybe just finish this painting. I, I will gladly wait. To, I guess we can go to three hours, so we will close everything at three hours. Yeah. So, <laughs> I guess in the three hours will. <laughs> maybe I can uh, continue. Yeah. The three hours will hunt you. Maybe some uh, some wise man with a stick yeah. will <laughs> the usual, the usual uh, concept art figure. Yeah. The, I'm just kidding, if you want to stop by, it's uh, it's true that the time is late and uh, it's a little mm -hmm. bit, uh, I'm, I'm afraid of the noise I'm, uh, I may be uh, doing now. It's uh, in a good spirit, a noise that should be justified, I guess. But yeah, yeah, because I like previously some friends told me like the streams might be a little bit too long. And yeah, and my response to it was like, okay, the next stream will be longer, and it was longer, <laughs> and now this one is even longer, so I guess <laughs> it's nice. So I can still like see how are you painting. But if you were like, you want to like finish or something like this, just just tell me so we can wrap it up. I would just but, uh, finish this one. Yeah, yeah, most likely I will see it how how it looks like finished. Yeah, in the, now that we are doing this, for example, now that this character is, for example, consists mm -hmm. of armor, so it has me metallic parts, I would, uh, after the silhouette, for example, I would be painting mainly uh, specular reflection. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. in my mind now, I would be thinking, what kind of light does uh, yeah, this uh, area... He is reflecting what, what around light? him. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So I would do something like a quick pass of a mirror-like surface and then I could work on some uh, details possibly to finish it more quickly. Uh, so I would be doing stuff like that, maybe some white light. <laughs> I like always how the small silhouettes, how goofy they look like when they are just like placed there and there is like no information about whatsoever on them. It's always a funny thing. Mm. But the annoying um, thing is like it took you like how ma how long thirty seconds, and it, it's yeah and it's for the basic starts looking okay. <laughs> it's kind of always amazing how how easy it is to how how much a brain can actually fill in in the gaps if you like give mm. it the right informations. Uh, from the suggestion, yeah, this is yeah. also one of the things that yeah. you can't really do with the drawing. Like, it's really hard to suggest something with a drawing, with a painting. Yeah. It's like easy, but mm. it's not not that easy with a painting. With a drawing, it's like you are forced to work more on details, and uh, it takes away from this uh, trying to to show a, mm. a subject with some few strokes. With the drawing, you are already doing details yeah, right. on something. It's like you have that's already starting with the really 
like precise lines, so it's hard yeah. to avoid getting precise. Mm-hmm. And with a drawing, you can clearly see a lot of different mistakes <laughs> going on. So that's yeah. right. Also, this was, I guess, this is, is like one of the things that I want to work on right now is actually loosening up with the painting so to be able just to sketch but because yeah. i feel like i don't really sometimes enjoy sketching but i guess that's because i suck at sketching mm. that's all i really like to <laughs> go all the way through all the design the sketching this like the thinking part and then making a final illustration but i really like the ability just to yeah. sit and just scrabble something to make it look nice and i guess this is the thing that i really need to uh, work on so you you have planned some kind of exercises. Although I think that if you if you start doing some personal work mm-hmm. or something with uh, that goal with that goal in your mind, I think either you like it or not, you, yeah, you will I, be I there. Yeah, it will be most likely time. The it's not personal type yeah. of thing that yeah. I will try to try to make. So yeah. we will see how it will turn out. And also, I just recently, I got a commission for some illustrations. And it will be like a small card art, so they don't even need to be like this this oh. precise. Nice. So it will kind of fit the the idea that I has in mind. Yeah. So here is the night. Yeah, so <laughs> and it's kind of weird because I was so. watching it from the beginning, and I still think I missed the the moment when <laughs> when when it happened. <laughs> so yeah, nice. Oh, the color. And yeah, sometimes in bed I mm-hmm. play with this because uh, uh, because all the, it's like it is very influenced by all the colors and sometimes this color collection it's uh, like a yeah. white balance how they say. Yeah, and, usually uh, usually this type can of play thing around I call the oracle style. because after finishing the painting I'm always like I'm going to ask the oracle about the colors and poof out of color out of tone out of contrast <laughs> and I will see yeah. what the oracle has to say. <laughs> And uh, some mm-hmm. other uh, post uh, processing effects and tranks sometimes, and that's yeah. it. And I would, if I wanted to take this further, I would be doing a lot mm-hmm. more texture work, uh, more careful uh, calculation, some corrections here, maybe more yeah. texture. I think here. Yeah, to be honest, because it looks kind of amazing. Some like. Thanks a lot, man. It's it's still mind-boggling to me. Like I can see from the start to finish, but I still don't really understand how it happened. Like when it happened, to be honest. So yeah, if anyone has any like I guess final questions, because I think we will be wrapping this one up. Or do you want to stay to three hours? Uh, how many minutes? Thirty-three minutes is... left to three hours. <laughs> I think it may be too late to make <laughs> okay, the noise so to the neighbor. The next, <laughs> next stream, I <laughs> guess, I up. won't mess up the Saturday with a Sunday. So <laughs> the next stream with you, I guess, will be three hours because... or maybe longer. Or maybe I will try to make like a stream with you and with Naimul and we will see how, how it will turn out. Maybe we'll make a challenge. Maybe I will show you to... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Uh, I hope uh, I hope it was uh, somehow helpful with these things. I know that in in such streams you can't always put all the info that yeah, there is that's, uh, to be that's said. Why is the number it's like three, very... number three, and there will be like yeah. way more to go, and <laughs> you will be here yeah. many more times, I guess. So <laughs> it, you will have still the occasions to tell way more info yeah, no about it. So yeah, so I guess really thanks for like doing the stream for being here yeah Thank even you even be, even though the the problem that i have made with all the hours and everything because of messing all the days no <laughs> but i'm really happy it turned out okay and for all the guys that were watching this i hope you enjoyed this video and that you actually learned something new and that you will follow the constantinos works and will visit his profile and everything the whole video will be recorded in here so like later probably it will get processed so you will be able to like review it Mm. i don't think there were many problems in terms of like the voice and sound and loudness or anything i guess the stream are getting better and better and if you have any questions or anything to constantinos feel free to write them on my fan page in here on the comments and I will try to redirect them to him so he won't get like a spam 
of the messages. Maybe I will try to <laughs> tackle all of the things that will be going in here. And also, I guess that's all. And thanks for watching. So this is the painting. Yeah, later good I will night. post it somewhere. <laughs> Konstantinos also will post it in, in his places. Ah, so yeah. good night. And I hope you enjoyed the, the stream. More to come. Yeah. Thanks, so, mate. Yeah, pressing the good night. button now.